it's a really redemption for me too. I really appreciate you doing this. No, I, I, can, I, I was told you're very nice people. And when I got off the first time, I was like, they don't seem like nice people <laughs> to me at all. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva. Go to sattva.com slash the shit to get $200 off your next order. Boom. Daddy la lagon. Daddy la lagon. Daddy la lagon. How do you think his week's been since? It's funny that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually know how his week's been. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I've been thinking about that guy all week and just his torment. And how affected he was by people calling him daddy. He doesn't know how good. That's the only. That's the funny part. <laughs> There's nothing bad about being called daddy. No. Daddy's a good thing. He thinks that it's so gay. It's just like the gays. Yeah, it's not. That's so gay, but it's not. It's not so gay. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be, but it could be super straight too. Yeah, but he said dudes are saying it. That yeah. I re-listened to it last week, and he goes, "What all these dudes are like." Daddy la la go, no, come on, bro. I like girls. <laughs> I like girls. I know. And then the tears. You know what God. that kid needs, honestly, if he wants what? to like kind of mess things or shift things up in his life? Mm. Pow. Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. And you scratch your beard with it? Yep. What One glove. kind of glove is that? It, it looks formal. It's It's an advanced, you know. Everybody, by the way, we were wondering what would happen. Yeah. Everybody's hitting me up. You're kidding. Yeah, they're like, oh, man, I like, I love your glove. Or where can I get a glove? And I'm like, yeah. Well, we knew that would happen. Yeah, I know. How's, so how has glove life been for you? Mm, I mean, pretty cool. You know, it's like, I imagine it's probably like what, I don't know, Coco Chanel went through yeah. when she started wearing those glasses or whatever. Well, she, she popularized those, the stripey shirt yeah that fishermen were wearing so everybody's like yeah uh you know hey me too you just feel like everyone's trying to cop your style but i wow. get you know i get it i get it now is it hard going to the bathroom with the glove it can be you... i've had i threw a couple gloves away i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i figured as yeah. much because you are a righty wiper yeah and sometimes you're like oh that was all paper and then you pull your glove up and you realize it was a lot of glove you know <laughs> But then are you not thankful that you had the glove on in a, in a way? In a way, yeah. <laughs> Will you be making your promo posters with your hands now to show? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'll, they, they want to rebrand the rest of the tour. What is it going to be called? It's just going to be like, you know. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. That's got a special fingertip on it. Yeah, there. so that I can do the show. So I can wow. Because yeah. those look like gentlemen's so, well, gloves. So I can still do yeah. the board. Those look like, um, mm. like I was watching gentlemen's driving gloves. No, no, like I was watching Pride and Prejudice last night, ah. and they, they like that era. I don't know, was it Victorian or mm. what? No, it wasn't Victorian era. Whatever that is, mm. you know, like like Darcy would wear gloves like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort of. I guess I am kind of, but I'm kind of one of those regal type of guys. Well, you certainly are. Yeah. Now, do you wear them when you're driving so of that course. you drive faster? Yeah. The children are a little concerned. Lots of questions. Yeah. Why is daddy wearing Mostly a glove? Mostly what Ellis has been asking me is, where's your other glove? Yeah. He's like, why are you wearing one? And I'm like, you don't understand adult shit yet. <laughs> That's true. You don't true. understand fashion. Yeah. You don't understand your dad's persona. Mm-hmm. And then he's just like, whatever. Whatever, dad. And he walks away. And it's been interesting with our lovemaking. You don't take it off. It's been kind of special. I mean, it's supposed to be gloves all the time. Yep. Yep. Once you're in that glove life. Yeah. You, you can't know, take it off. You can't take it off. No. You're in the glove life. And I've been accused. A lot of people have been like, oh, what about, you know, that's Michael Jackson's thing. No. And I'm like, <laughs> no. First of all. First of all. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Secondly, it probably kept him from fucking so many boys. Yes. You know? It did. Get hands off. And then, yeah, yeah I'm way to glove to remind me I can't yeah, fuck boys. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. So I actually, I feel like I'm doing a service to society and telling society, don't fuck boys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So. 
But but his was all sparkly and not masculine, and yours is very masculine. Yeah, mine's pretty masculine. I have I have some other ones. They're yeah. all gonna. Ma- I mean, you'll see them. Okay. I'm having a few custom ones made. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. It's really exciting, Tom. Um, you ready to open the show? So ready. What do we got? <laughs> here you go. Uh oh. Hey, what's up, TikTok? It's Lalo Gambrazi here. Look, uh, I got a message for everybody, especially all the guys again, bro. Because I see on all my posts, you guys keep disrespecting me, bro. So I'm back again to tell you guys all a quick message, bro. Stop commenting daddy on my post, bro. I already told you multiple times, bro. I don't got to keep telling you over and over and over, bro. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. It's so funny. Your mom in the fucking stand. Welcome. So Welcome to your mom's house. With Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pazitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. realize how nice this glove is for holding a beverage you're kidding it's really nice how does it feel it's just like you know you don't have like that wet condensation yeah or it's not too hot yeah. it's not too cold it's just perfect it's kind of like the glove life is the right life you know i think you found your life yeah um this guy's making me laugh so hard because i, I don't know but i don't know why i'm so amused at how upset he is like why do i why is it so <laughs> Because it's so upset, man. Something's because so it's, stupid. It's not necessary <laughs> to to be that upset about. It. That's why. Stop commenting, Daddy, under my post, you guys. Please, <laughs> <laughs> please, guy. And he's tearing up. Look yeah. how fired up he he's is. His, so... his face is all red, and he's got his fucking. He's like, oh, come on, man, please, please. Bro, I'm not in jail, bro. You guys see, I'm out here. I'm not in jail, bro. You guys see, I'm out here. You fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I want. <laughs> my uh my glove just went crazy <laughs> it why do i gotta keep telling you guys every single day bro stop stop calling me daddy stop calling me not going stop telling me this and now you guys are commenting free lalo free lalo i'm not in jail bro you guys see i'm out here i'm not in jail stop stop with all that <laughs> stop commenting all that weird stuff under my pose bro stop <laughs> You weird, bro. Stop. <sighs> but all, but all the other cool people, I'll rock with you guys, and you guys have a good rest of your day, bro. Much love. That's the best part. <laughs> when he does the flip. Yeah. Or you know what you could do to stop the comments? What? Stop making new videos. Yeah, but here's the thing. Don't make the video. He doesn't realize that. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for him now, though. I know it's getting sad. Yeah, because he's he's too upset. He's too <laughs> it's funny that he's like somewhat upset. But now that he's moved to tears and like I mean it's so silly. That's the thing is that they're not they're not actually doing anything really bad. They're just like, Sup daddy? <laughs> <laughs> well then what's free Lola? Is it like free you to be gay? Like free your gayness, Lola? No, they're just you know, like you just free him. I don't know. Like Yeah. He's locked up. He's like, I'm not in jail, bro. I'm free. You guys have a good rest of your day, bro. <laughs> Stop calling me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that he feels, is it guilt for his rage? Or he, he has a, in a he has a moment where he realizes how, it must be a moment of like, hey, this is absurd. I need to also wish the people that like me a good day. Otherwise, well, I will lose those viewers. Yeah, he, he's aware of his audience. <laughs> he's aware that you can't just, yeah, like flamethrow the whole audience. So it's like, here's everybody that I'm pissed at. Yeah. But just side note, some of you are cool. <laughs> you know? Much love. <laughs> this feels like it's ruining his life now. It's ruining his life. It's yeah. taking I over. Didn't, I didn't know that it was to this point. Like he's. <laughs> and we're definitely not helping. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not helping. <laughs> we're not helping. But haven't you ever had that where you carry it for days? Like you get, I get dialed into stupid things too. Yeah. And I get like into beefs that aren't really real. Of course, because it's you like, realize the older you get that ev- <laughs> like everything, all that stuff, it's all in your mind. Yeah. Everything is. Everything. This is in his head. Like it's all perspective, <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. Like you could just be like, I love being called daddy. Or you just tell yourself that, you tell if he tells himself that when somebody writes daddy, they're telling him you're hot or you're cool, then he would just like, yeah, it's all perspective. Just let it go. You, yeah, so it's just that he he can't let go that it mean <clears throat> like to him, it's an accusation that he doesn't want to be that he's gay. Yeah, <laughs> but they're clearly like they're, you're not calling him that. No, he hears that though. He's hearing that, right? He That's what I'm saying. That. It's in your head. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gay, Daddy Lala. Girl. You're not. I can tell you like girls a yeah. lot. He's very passionate. You know what oh, he needs to do? Shit. He needs to do some videos with some girls. Now you're talking. Yeah. yeah. And they should be like, ooh, Daddy, the whole time. <laughs> See, I told you, I'm not no fucking maricon. <laughs> and then he's like, I got these bitches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to take it to but another level. But he might be level. like he might be from a household where like that is talked about and you know For what I mean? sure. For sure. I'm trying to think of stuff that upsets me to that level. So somebody like a parent could be like, "Hey Miko, let me see your he, TikTok comments." Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's this shit this fucking yeah. geisha here? I got everybody telling you daddy, huh? You got the chupa pinga don't you? Dude, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Like his cousin or somebody saw it. Yeah. He's like, "Made my fucking cousin Danny and Downey saw this shit." And he's like, and he's like, "What the fuck is up with this?" It's his cousin that saw yeah. it, bro. That's so what it is. Some vato and and some fucking all this gay bullshit out here, man. Yeah. 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 It's his gangbanger yeah, okay. cousin that saw it yeah. and is like, "Stop calling me daddy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a shout out. Oh, yeah. Got a- you gotta, gotta protect g- the rest of the base. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. So amazing. Poor Daddy Lalagon. Oh. Guys, stop calling him Daddy. Seriously. Stop calling him Daddy. Stop it. How is you? You've been gone so much lately. You've been gone. This is not even gone a lot. Really? No. What do you mean? It's gonna be much more gone. It's gonna get way goner. Way goner. It's so crazy because right now I feel like I haven't seen you since last week, since we recorded this show pretty much. Yeah, I left. What did I leave? I don't remember. It's no, I left Friday. Blur. What are you talking about? Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. I left Friday for Vegas. Vegas? Oh, it's because you left before that. I That's went to why. Indian Apple Tits and I'll be in Momver, Colorado this week. And the tickets are probably all gone by now. It's okay. going fast. Where are you going? Let me add some shows. Comedy Vooks. Downtown? Comedy works. Yes, it does. You lucky dog. It's the best. I cannot wait. I can't freaking wait. It is such. Comedy works. Yes, an it does. Amazing fucking Comedy club. and prayer. And then I do, before that, the Velveeta Room the night before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. And then I do Raleigh, Charlie Goodnights, one night only, November 4th. Uh, Atlanta, the punchline, November 19th through 20th. Wise guys, Salt Lake City, Puto. And that's Thanksgiving weekend. That's the best time to leave your family. It is. And then the LOL Comedy Club in San Antonio, December 9th through 11th. LOL. <laughs> and then Orlando, Florida, December 16th through 18th. Great. I can't wait. I can't wait. What a weird tour. This has been, <laughs> this um, tour was like all the states that I could book gigs in this time last year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been like a Republican tour. It's been pretty funny. <laughs> like a conservative. Well, they've been great. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're actually right, but it's all way the cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, the, these conservative cities, Markets, yeah. which is so funny. And but like, I, which but I've been loving it. But what's the, con- which what, Indianapolis? Well, Indianapolis, Tits, Des yeah. Moines. Yeah. Um, Oklahoma City. It's kind of, it's kind of, the city is a little mixed yeah there's blue voters i mean it's a red state for sure yeah yeah that's what i mean yeah predominantly yeah yeah um like i said i don't care i just, I think it's great it's been fun 
Uh, so, but anyway, I I haven't seen you much, but you know what I've um, decided to do? Mm. So I moved the kids upstairs to be closer to us. I know. And I took over Ellis's room and I had this epiphany because I was like, yeah, I can make it an office, right? That's what adults do. That You share a bedroom with your spouse and then you might have a, another spare room and you make it into an office. And yeah. I thought to myself, I says to myself, I says, self, <laughs> When have you ever done your creative work sitting at a proper desk? Never point, never. Mm. The only time I come up with something cool is when I'm, you know, uh, in the shower or I'm like sitting down, I'm laying in a recliner, I'm listening to Bauhaus, I'm getting weird. So then I says, well, why not make yourself a bedroom that's like your teenage dream room, the room your parents never let you have. Yeah. And so it goes. And now I'm making a fucking goth mom room and i'm gonna make it dark as shit i've already picked out some dark ass wallpaper and i'm gonna goth it the fuck out and i'm gonna listen to bauhaus and get weird in there bro mm. mm-hmm. i like it mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be all the stuff i've wanted like i want to order you know remember in disneyland and the haunted mansion those portraits that change when you go down yeah, and like yeah. i want weird shit like that in there a lot of taxidermied animals God, why are you so gothy it's just I'm dark. You know what I realized? The older I get, like, I'm dork-sided. I just like it. And I've been trying to be normal my entire life. And it's just been a struggle to try to be a cheerleader. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've always wanted to be a cheerleader, but I'm not. I'm fucking dark-sided. I'm weird. Yeah. So I'm trying to just be my, my real self, you know? Mm. It took 45 years before I'm like, you know what? I like weird shit. Sorry. It's yeah. who I am. It's who I am. So, yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's kind of the Pajitsky effect of this all is like, oh, I can just I can just do what I want. I can I can make a goth room. I don't need to put a desk in there and pretend like I'm doing something. Sure. I can just go in there and get weird. Speaking of P effects, didn't yeah. you just um sort sort of a P effect you, you oh. texted the boys? Oh. <laughs> I've had to. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Nadav. Nadav, will you tell them what happened? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, so, so you know, she was checking to see, like, oh yeah, just wanted to make sure uh, when we're uh, uploading the the mom rap video that she did with Crayshon. Yeah. So I told Christina. Uh, so I says, I, <laughs> I says, uh, you know, we'll release it the day after that the YMH episode comes out, so it doesn't compete. And then as she's in the same room with everyone that she's on the group text with, me and Any, yeah. she writes back. Okay, got it. And then both of our phones vibrate, and we look up, and it's from Christina, and we look up, and she's right next to us, and boy, was that confusing. <laughs> yeah, you could have just said that. I could have just said it. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what's like... I'm so fucking retarded. I think I'm just getting... I'm so retarded. Like, what is... Is it my, am I aging? Do I have Alzheimer's? Or is it just like, I think I'm spread thin. Like I have two little kids. I'm trying to do There's too much. There's a lot mad. going on. I don't, I just don't have time to be like, is this normal? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I had another Pajitsky effect. Are you ready? Sure. Oh my God. So first of all, I was blown away last week to learn that boneless chicken wings are not, they don't just take out the tiny wings from the chicken. And when you said it, oh my God. <laughs> when you're like, what did Christina? You go and you did the motion. You go, what do they pull the bone out of the meat? Like, yes, I that's did. What you thought they did. Yes, I thought that's what boneless. <laughs> it's almost. This almost makes you... me want to take my glove off. <laughs> Don't you dare! Don't you dare take the glove off! <laughs> but when you did that motion, that's a hundred percent what I wanted it to be. And then yeah. when it wasn't that, I was like, what the fuck? So I had this other Pajitsky effect. So stupid. So as you know, we've had the the Sopranos kids on your mom's house. We befriended them. They now have their, they had a show, they still have a show, sorry, Pajama Pants Podcast. Yes. Rob Eiler, Jamie Lynn Sigler, and um, Kasim G. And anyway, I'm friends with Rob and, you know, the guys, all of them, Jamie. I'm watching Sopranos. And as you know, Rob plays the character AJ. Mm -hmm. And... It finally hit me after being a huge fan of the show. Can for, I guess? Because I haven't watched the. I actually haven't watched the series. Oh my gosh! It's I've spectacular. I've seen a number of scenes and the characters. It's such a pop culture hit that I've seen. You've seen parts, but not like the whole. Oh, right. I mean, can yeah. I guess? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Guess. And I, I, I haven't seen it. Okay. 
I'm guessing it's Anthony Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know that. This whole time. <laughs> I didn't know that the whole time. I had no fucking idea. I was just like, but isn't his full name is AJ? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's AJ. A- AJ. AJ. Yeah. Like they just call him AJ. Isn't that a fucking Wait, you thought dumbest? his name was A J A Y? No. I just thought like AJ. Just it's just initials and they call him like we call um LJ, our son, little jeans. Right. But I just it like but, for that's, something. but I know, but I didn't for some reason I just thought, well, it's AJ. It's just his name is AJ. I don't know. Maybe it's an AJ. Italian why, thing. Why are, yeah. Hey, AJ, get the gabagool or whatever the fucking, you know. Why are you punctuate? Why are you going AJ? I don't know. I don't know, but I never thought it stood for AJ. Maybe any, you do I have never, Alzheimer's. Maybe there is something <laughs> happening. I am getting dumber by the second. Yeah. And I'm friends with a guy. Like, here's the 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 crazy part. It's like, I, I love Rob Isle. I could have easily for a long time now been like, a, what's AJ stand for? And yeah. I didn't. What's AJ stand for? Yeah, is AJ is a, the two letters acronym? Holy shit! Yeah. yeah, Anthony Jr. and she says it in an episode. Anthony Jr. Oh, then you, okay. Edie Falco, and I was like, Is this when you put it together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carmela goes, Anthony Jr. Get down here, and I was like, Like I had a moment. Yeah, where I was like. That's AJ? Boneless chicken wings? <laughs> Surf and turf, it all makes sense. Wow. Yeah. And I haven't told him because I I want him to listen to this and be surprised by yeah. the Pajitsky effect. What if he what if he calls you and he goes, I didn't know it said for <laughs> that either? And what if Rob's like, you just told me what it stood for? <laughs> that would be a really astounding yeah. <laughs> if he works on the show and he doesn't know his yeah. own name. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he does. Now, what if he's like, I thought my name was just AJ. <laughs> AJ. Hey, AJ. Hey, hey, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. yeah, what if it's an Italian thing? I Could don't be. Fucking know. Yeah. AJ, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Hey, AJ. All right, folks. <laughs> make eye contact with me right now. I'm going to expose your demons, okay? Stop. I'm going to command them to surface, okay? Uh. <laughs> now, pay close attention to what I'm going to say here. After I expose your demons, because oh, no. you need to get help if these <laughs> demons are inside you. Okay. Evil spirits, I am commanding you now to manifest. Come up to the surface. Come up to the, the surface. Get out from your hiding place right now. Get out from your hiding place right now. So there's a couple things going on here. Number one, there is an exorcism being uh, 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 done to you through a man's eyes. Number two, it really... <laughs> Highlights the importance of eyebrow hair, brow and, maintenance, and brow maintenance. Absolutely, yeah. because this is a disaster. Disastrous. And you can see that he attempted at one point to tweeze the middle section and yeah. then gave up. He did, and the thing is, what's interesting is that he he gave up and then filmed. Yeah, I would have filmed right after I had plucked fresh. Out. Yeah, right, because he does have. It effort. is a thing, There's man. Effort. As a guy. You n- you never pay attention to your face you in, in middle school. I mean, like, you know, you don't pay attention to, like, little details, right? Your eyebrows are just, like, shaped a certain way, and you don't have to do anything. And then you hit a certain age, and you start getting wonky hairs. And you start, yes. And you have to do something, ones. or you look like a fucking lunatic. Mm-hmm. And these are absolutely dog shit. Dog you know? shit. You know what, though? You're lucky because you've got naturally shaped meanies. They're yeah. lovely. Well, well, Yeah, look at those meanies. Oof. You got them Joe Jackson yeah. eyebrows. He's got the meanies too. Look at those. So blessed. So expressive. Yeah. And yeah. our our sons have the your eyebrows as well. I mean, I pay a lot Especially of money to get mine arched like that. Ellis is like yeah. Oof, all day. Yeah. For just it's so great looking. You know what's so fun is that uh uh our youngest son's been calling me a butt. Yeah. He goes, "You're a butt." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah. You're a butt." He goes, "No, I'm not." <laughs> And I realized right. that it can really, it's like calling him daddy. Yeah. Like it really, it really <laughs> pisses him off. No, I'm not. Yeah. So yesterday he was just like, no, nah, 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 like sitting there eating something. I go, hey, you know, you're a butt. He goes, I am not a butt. <laughs> he got so upset. Yeah. 
If they asked you to sniff their butts, yeah, I get that, and then yeah. they pull their pants down and then wag yeah. your asses in the air. Yeah, it's they're like, quiet. smell my butt. Yeah, I'm like I'm not gonna smell your butt. Yeah, uh, Ellis called me a fuck. Yep, Juju's been saying fuck a lot. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, and then he looks at me, waiting for me, to be like, you can't say fuck, and yeah. I just don't. I ignore it now. I'm like, just go ahead and say it. Good luck. Say it at school. Well, wait, did you? So did you feel the demons come out of you? Just now? I did feel something happening. What did you feel? Um, I felt like I wanted to change videos. <laughs> <laughs> we are supported by Squarespace. I love Squarespace. I have uh, made many a website myself using Squarespace. Um, I even recommend it to my 75-year-old father who built a website using Squarespace. Incredible. That's... If an older guy can do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I mean, it's true. It's so easy to use. The templates are lovely. They're just so clean, so intuitive. You know, I hate going to somebody's website and everything's all jumbled up. You don't know where to find it. Um, you can, you know, blog or publish whatever you want. You can sell products and services of all kinds. Promote your business or an upcoming event. Customize the look and feel, the settings, the products, and more with just a few clicks. Um, there's a new way to buy domains and choose from over 200 extensions, 24 seven award-winning customer support, nothing to upgrade or patch ever. It's so simple and beautiful. So head to squarespace.com slash mom for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code mom to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This episode of your mom's house is brought to you by Policy genius, what's scarier than getting a box of raisins while trick or treating? Paying too much for your home and auto insurance, but Policy Genius can help you avoid that. Protect your property from mischief this spooky season with the right home and auto coverage. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one place. They help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they're paying for home and auto insurance. They've saved new customers an average of $435 a year on auto insurance, and they've saved new customers an average of $350 a year on home insurance. Getting started is easy. You head over to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate to find your lowest quotes. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Speaking of language, mm. there's a video that that pert pertains to language and, and actually mm -hmm. saying language in school. You're kidding. You want to hear it? I'd love to. I don't know if they fags or what. Search a nigga down and grab his nuts. <laughs> and on the other hand, without a gun, they can't get none. But don't let it be a black and white one because they'll slam you down to the street top. Black police showing out for the white cop. <laughs> is this me ice cube will swarm on any motherfucker in a blue uniform just because i'm from the cpt punk police are afraid of me a young nigga on a war path oh, wow. and when i'm finished it's gonna be a bloodbath of Jeez. cops dying in la yo dre i'm something to say fuck the police fuck 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 the police fuck fuck you get the gist I got this the is gist. in your curriculum how do you defend that are you proud? Your curriculum. This is what you're teaching our kids. Wait, how is this By in the, the way, curriculum? When I said she look, I just meant she looks like me. Oh, you did. This is not my content. I don't. <laughs> Go see Christina and Con No, and I don't. <laughs> this week at the Comedy Works downtown. I don't condone this. Uh, the way she read those words. This is words. a clip from the show in Indianapolis a few weeks ago. <laughs> this is my opener. Now. So she's yeah. she's quoting which song is this? It was it called police. "Fuck the Police." NWA, old by, classic. That's right, an old group called NWA from. What does Los that Angeles. stand for? It's got a pose uh, <laughs> attitude. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I've this heard of this the, group. No, I know this is an iconic song. So yeah, it's pretty. It's teaching pretty well this in school. I'm but not that's assuming. the funny thing is, I don't. I want to understand the context of this is in your <laughs> curriculum. Because I'll what? say this: I side with her. This should not be in the curriculum. This shouldn't be taught in class. <laughs> right. What class exactly yeah. is this being taught in? Is this know. social studies? Is this science, biology? I don't know. I can't imagine the PE? I can't imagine the class when they're like, eh, hey, hit play. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the police. 
it would be kind of tight during gym to hear this song. Though. Be, yeah. He'd be like, get me all fucking fired up. Pull ups. During dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get one more pull up. Fuck the pole. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> I wish you had the rhythm down for it more. Yeah. Like, you, bitch, you know the song. Yeah. This bitch is older. She, she's probably my age. Like, you know, fuck the police. Yeah. It would be funnier if she had rapped it, though. She's like, fuck the police coming straight oh, from yeah. the whatever. This is a good idea. <laughs> If you guys want to send a remix of her version <laughs> to your mom's podcast oh, at damn. gmail.com. It's a great idea. We'll play it um, on the next live show. Um, oh my gosh. That's yeah. a great idea. Wow. This is really something, man. Well, no. I kind of want I want to watch more of this. I know. Like, well, I want to watch 10 minutes of her doing this. See, I watch these videos a lot on my Instagram feed, parents that go to this, these meetings and yeah. complain about stuff. And some of the complaints are very legitimate. <laughs> yeah. There's one book going around in a school, public school. Um, it's like a gay sex scene. I forget which book it's in. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why are we teaching them about gay sex? And they're like four, fourth graders. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason to... Is it, a, is it just that people... Gay people have sex, or is it like a graphic? No, it's a graphic scene. It's a it's a description of gay sex, mm -hmm. and it's for like younger kids. So the the mom is like, I don't know, I don't think my kid needs to learn about gay sex in fourth grade. I'm like, mm. fourth grade, they're nine. I know, but you don't need to read the sensual description of like if it's like stuff happening. His dick came out and hundred percent, yeah, it's juicy like, at the top. Yes, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to hear her rapping some more. Let's hear it. I don't know if they fags or what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is great. Oh, shit. Again, again. Uh, Search a nigga down and grab his nuts. <laughs> Okay. Again. Okay. I don't know if they fags or what. Search a nigga down and grab his nuts. And on the other hand, without a gun, they can't get none, but don't let it be a black and white one because they'll slam you down to the street top, black police showing out for the white cop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, the thing. that's one of my favorite moves is like the reading the thing and then the look. Like, you guys know what I'm saying. It's whack. You happy with that? <laughs> yeah. Ice Cube will swarm right. on any motherfucker That's in a true. blue uniform. He will. Just because I'm from the CPT, punk police are afraid of me. A young nigga on a warpath. <laughs> and when I'm finished, it's going to be a bloodbath of cops dying in L.A. Yeah, Yo, Dre, I'm something to say. Fuck the police. Fuck, fuck. fuck. See that well, to end right there? Fuck, fuck. It's fuck the police. Fuck fuck, 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 fuck the police. Fuck the, correct. So she, her rhythm is so off. Right. I feel like whoever she's speaking to, she'd be like, you could read that last part again. You did it really out of tone. And But here's the deal, man. Your rhythm sucks. But now that I hear her, you're right. It's kind of taken out of context, right? So when she's like, fuck the police, fuck, fuck, fuck. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you. you Maybe know, you should do this character on <laughs> Just go up there. And be like, she's got my haircut. Hey, y'all, we're about to start my comedy show. Fuck the police. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. But uh, yeah, but it was, a, it was a very important song. Yeah. It's a very important thing, but whatever. Karen doesn't approve. She does not. She does not like it at all. She's not cool. I mean, you fuck were, the police. <laughs> you listened to this song, what, sixth grade maybe, when this came oh out for God, you? So much. Yeah, so did I. So much. I would play it so loudly <laughs> in my bedroom. <laughs> My dad would come and be like, the hell are you doing? <laughs> what is this? And I was like, it's music, dad. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like <"But> what? <clears throat> I remember my uh, Gosh. my cousin uh, visited and I was playing this song and he was a police officer. Mm. And he was just like, you play this? And I was like, it's great music. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, that's cool. So fuck me. And I was like, I guess so. <laughs> You punk ass cop. Well, I feel this song and this album was very influential in a it young Tommy's was. life. Oh, in my life? But well, this is, you know what? It, it coincided with the age when 
you feel aggression and you want to express aggression. Like, For you know, sure. You're like a young boy. Like I couldn't relate to what they were like the song, but it was just that it was the full streets. Of, yeah. yeah. And it was full of anger. Sure. And I was like, oh, that's cool. perfect timing. Yeah. I want, I wanted to express rage. Sure. You know? Yeah. So that's like, um, yeah. Some people just did it through death metal and I did it through fucking the police. You fuck the police. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, punk rock too. You you dial into boys at the right age. And no, the difference is though, I would I would listen to that song, and then you know go to the mall and see a cop and be like, "Hello." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good boy. Yeah, right. Well, and also too, like the reason you probably were drawn to it is because it was cool because it was forbidden. But when they yeah, if they yeah. were to teach it in school. Would you think it was cool, right? Well, now they're probably, I mean, when she said it's in your curriculum, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably in this, a a new class either about, it's either about, you know, um, like the evolution of that music. Yeah. Or like how there's, you know, there's more awareness now of like the black plight and story in America. And so maybe there's a class now that's like, this song was about how, you know, yeah. black people were he's got yeah, abused by the police and that the whole relationship that was highlighted by the George Floyd and the, plo- yes, the protest. Yes, so maybe yes. there's a class about that. Yes. And they're just highlighting part of that with this. She's being a real, you know, yeah. stick in the mud about like this is the curriculum, like acting like the right. class. It's is out of about, context. Right. Fuck the The same thing as like um a journalist. Uh, writing an article about your stand-up, being like, "This is," yes. they give you a line, yeah, one like, isolation. Like, no, but this is about a performance, <laughs> right? This know? is about right, like everything you just said. That's true. It's also true. It's like when parents, you know, l- l- were offended by Catcher in the Rye or yeah. like one scene in, in some book or a line. Um, yeah, you want to see something pretty funny? You look very excited. You didn't listen to anything I just said yeah. because you were so excited. I know. I know. We do that a lot on this show. I just talk into the void. <laughs> <laughs> it's the. It's, I'm so used to this existence. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I apologize. You know I'm what? I'm used to it. Don't stop. I am. Catcher in the Rye. Let's go over it again. Okay, you listen. I did listen. Go ahead. I mean, you hear, but you don't listen. Tell me. No, I'm done. I, that was my stupid thought. I already forgot about it. Daddy Lala Gon. What's his new name now? Daddy Lala. Tell me your Catcher in the Rye thing. No, that's what they. That's what people were upset about. The catcher in the rye. I think there's a there's a character. Isn't there a character? No, that's the the Sawyer, oh. N word Jim. Oh, oh yeah, that's different. And right? they're like, we can't have that word. And you're like, that's stupid. I look at the relevance. You have to look at the context. The whole oh, like thing. when it was written by whom? Correct. About, why, yeah. why is there that? So why are we? But people were to this song, scared you know? of Holden and Catcher in the Rye. Because he was antisocial and, and, and hilarious and, and, and people who were antisocial were drawn to the book. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, this yeah. book is amazing. I, mean, I remember hearing about Catcher in the Rye and yeah. that there was, and I wasn't somebody consuming books at that age. Yeah. Like it was freshman year of high school and I read it and I was like, I like this Me guy. too. He was my hero. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this guy gets me finally. Yeah, yeah. Because he was For calling sure. out all the phonies and shit. Yeah. yeah. Teenage rage. Perfect. It was great. It was, it was great. fantastic. All right. What do you have to show me? I don't want to. Well. Delay it I, any longer, and I'm like, I think this is the kind of thing that we live for on this show. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. Um, he's awfully calm. So that he guy was like, nah, nah, almost nah. ended up all over that room, meaning every little <laughs> piece of him, but. Luckily, it was a T-shirt. The difference I was thinking about Fuck. this. So you know the other, the Russian lathe video. Yeah. <laughs> where uh, that guy goes bye bye real quick. Yeah. yeah. He has on a jacket, like a thick workman's jacket. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, like um, what's that brand? Uh, it's like, like Carhartt or something. Yeah, like Carhartt or uh, where it's like like thick, like Dickies. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're it's supposed like to work thicker, in it, right? Yeah. So he has those on, and when it gets caught. It's like that's not going to tear. That's what actually does them in. Mm-hmm. Is that when when the lathe gets a hold of them and pulls them, <laughs> that doesn't just tear. This guy has like a little rinky dinky t shirt on. Yeah, and at least he has the sense to pull against it. So instead of just disintegrating, he just spins out of his shirt. 
You know, and he does it so calmly. He's like, la, la, la. I, know. I would be panicked. I mean, Let's watch it again. Yeah. Jesus, look at him. <gasps> there it uh, goes, uh, stuck uh, in. Uh, uh. Whoa! Look at that. Look at that, dude. Shredded it. He's like, you fucking dogs, why don't you help me? I mean, Nadav said that he, Dang. you like this video, right? Yeah, this is the kind of lathe video I'm into. This is the type of stuff I send you, and then the other lathe video is the type of stuff you send me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you did not like the other lathe video. Uh, I hated it. Uh, <laughs> my dreams were a little different for that week. This is terrible. Did you ever look at the aftermath photos? Uh, yeah, I think you sent those to me too. You looked at there's <laughs> aftermath photos that are like 4K, like the the most yeah, you, clear photos you can possibly imagine see, of like, the aftermath. Body parts and stuff. You can see his hand <laughs> is still holding on All to right, where I'm it was. Throw up. Why? Yeah. Are you... No, I didn't. I didn't stick them out. They were sent to me because we put it. We played the sort of footage of it on the show, and then people were like, "Here's the aftermath," and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like he was all Wait, over that room. May I point out his absolute lack of safety in the first place? Oh this yeah, this is not, barefoot. Like, what are you doing, homie? Look at this equipment. Like he's wearing capri pants or something. Not even protective. Yeah, he doesn't give a rip. Yeah, he's lucky. He's lucky is understanding. That's what it says for sure. Yeah, he did not give a shit. It's just crazy. I was thinking about Oof. the guy in the Russian one that you're just gone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I know. Like the the his friend, there's that friend in it that walks in and he throws his hands in the air. He's like it's like that was Jim and he's just gone. Disintegrated. <sighs> That's a crazy way to die, huh? Yeah. That's yeah. probably the wor one of the worst ways. I don't. I mean, there's a certain panic, but then it's just over so fast. You know, it's over so fast. I know. You know what? I don't. I don't. What would suck is if it like just got your arm, Ugh. and then they cut it off. You'd be like, just turn it back on, man. <laughs> Can I say my my the way I don't want to die is in an airplane crash. Why? The amount of terror. But it's just for a moment. Terror of like, <gasps> and then do you feel your stomach drop? You know when you well, you, you feel fall fear, and you're like oh, but God. You, you don't feel the moment of dying. You don't feel. Death. But I don't, I don't want to feel fear before my death. Oh like, yeah, you feel. Well, here's the thing. What if you're asleep? It'd be great. Yeah. Oh, on the plane. Yeah, that'd be ideal. Sure. Because you don't survive a plane crash, really, do you? Very, very, no. very rarely. But they also don't happen frequently. Thank goodness. But I think it'd be a great way to go. What's your really? Well, yeah, because you're not. You don't feel anything. I guess, but the terror. I, I don't want to be scared. Well, that'd be like if they're like, uh, hi, this is your pilot, and just let you know we're going to die in a couple minutes. Like, they don't do that. No, you know but you mean? feel it falling, and you hear the, the sound. Everything's chaotic. But most chaotic. of the plane crashes aren't like that. like that. Plane crashes are like... Really? No. Plane, Not like in the movies? Well, I mean, look, a plane crash into the side of a mountain. They don't tell you that's going to... You don't know that's happening. <sighs> plane you're, crash you're just like looking upon for a... landing you don't know you're about to crash land i'm playing my best fiends and then all of a sudden yeah. fade to black yeah that's fine fuck yeah you're just that's drinking you your, your fourth gin and tonic on that flight that yeah. 6 a.m flight and then <laughs> that's how you want to go or a bullet to the back of the head no because you could survive a bullet in the head okay six bullets to the back of the head that's how you want to go? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm saying those are, you are completely unaware scenarios. Do you know what I mean? I just want to go, I just want to die in my sleep. I think that's number one. That That's like sure. pre preferred, right? Yeah. On heroin. That'd be great. There's a new Brittany Murphy documentary coming out soon. Was she doing heroin? No. So she, it turns out she was with that boyfriend, Monjock. This guy who was a real um, sociopath and he was a con artist type of guy and he latched onto her and it said that the toxicology report was that nothing illegal but over the counter pills. So maybe she was taking like, you know, some Zannies mixed with cold meds and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a, there's a lot of weird shit going on in that. He kept her in the house. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, I didn't want to see too many spoilers because I really want to get into it because wasn't her death so... It was so sudden. It seems like she was a big actress. She yeah. was getting skinnier. She didn't look very healthy. Right. But then she ODs or something. So there's a documentary coming out about it? Yes. I did not know this. 
can you, will you watch it with me? Sure. Look it up. It's the Brittany Murphy documentary. Because for years, I'm like, what happened to that girl? She seemed so happy and bright. Mm-hmm. And this guy got a hold of her, married her, and then she was dead. And then he dies a little bit later. He too. did? He dies too. So let's look at it. Are you going to spoiler alert me? I mean, spoiler, whatever. I don't care. Let's see it. Chilling. Okay. New doc reveals. You read it, Tom. My eyes are bad. Can you see? Oh, maybe this way. Um, <laughs> On a Sunday morning. In December, Brittany Murphy suddenly collapsed in the bathroom of the West Hollywood home she shared with her husband. Oh. Simon Monjack. Later that morning, the petite duet actress was taken to Cedar Sinai Medical uh-huh. Center, where she was soon uh, pronounced dead. Said that the uh, 32-year-old well, she died. probably couldn't get into the ER. Cedars is so backed up. She said the 32-year-old died from a lethal combination of pneumonia and prescription drugs. But a new two-part documentary delves deeper into the mysterious, nefarious circumstances around her tragic death <clears throat> and her troubled relationship with Monjack. Premiering. October 14th on HBO Max. What happened? Brittany Murphy looks at how Brittany Murphy went from one of her generation's most promising young stars with memorable turns in films such as Clueless and Girl Interrupted to one of Hollywood's darkest tragedies. That's the guy? Yeah, and he's older than her. and Apparently he was just a known creeper who would latch on to people and ruin their lives. And then that was he, what he was known for. Yeah. Like he was just kind of known in circles as being a liar, too. He would say things like, I had a brain tumor that I got rid of drinking vegetable juice. Like he would just oh, lie and yeah. be a weirdo. So he died shortly after. Yeah. He died a few months after her. Of what? I don't know. We have to watch the documentary. Interesting. The documentary, as Josh Potter would say. Documentary. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Elementary. I oh, think yeah. about it once a week at least. Yeah, it's fully fucking awesome. Elementary. Yeah. I mean, that's not even. I know. So strange. Not even in the ballpark of words, how you say things. It's a strange thing. He's a strange person. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Now, Tom, mm-hmm. I have uh, 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 two updates for you. I got a weather update and a dental update. Which one would you like? Um, I will go with uh, weather first. Great. Well, <laughs> we need a, we need a song for the weather update. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> Guys, you know what to do. We need a a weather song. Quick, short. Now, I've noticed, Tom, that it is, it is rainy outside and cloudy, and it looks like it should be cold. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. It's like 85. I noticed it, too. There's overcast, but, yeah. there, but there's still humidity and heat. So it's very confusing for me. Yesterday, I was sitting in my goth room, and I was staring out the window and I was like, it feels like it should be cold. Mm-hmm. I want to put on some sweaters and, and I can't. It's hot as shit still. Super strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's very confusing. But I don't think these Texans are cognizant of that. It's uh To them, this is normal. It's a good update. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Storm Dad... Yeah. It's probably going to storm tonight. Yeah, I've noticed there was <laughs> there were some storms coming. Yeah. My favorite is when you stand on our balcony and you go, give it to me, God. <laughs> it's probably the best thing. Yeah. I love it. And you genuinely are excited for these storms. I love the storm. Well, we got really lucky in that we have a home where there's a, there's a <laughs> built-in covered patio. Yes. So you can stand outside unless there's high winds. You can stand outside and watch a storm covered. It's really, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Will you be standing outside tonight? If there's a storm, I will fucking be there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really? And yeah. I also have a dental update. <laughs> Big topics, guys. This one is scandalous. So. Yeah, what happened? Now. Let me tell you about my dental hygiene. It's fucking impeccable. I use um, an electric toothbrush. I floss daily. I get even under my crowns with the dental flossers, as we know on this show. And I still floss by the bed and throw them down. So just so you know, go fuck yourselves. Um, So I went to the dentist here for the first time for a cleaning. And just so y'all know... I had my cleaning before we left Los Angeles, so I know my shit is tight, and I just had x-rays done, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know I'm in good shape. Okay. This new dentist, Tommy, goes, oh, 
Well, you see this tooth back here? She goes, this crown is lifting. Oh, and then the molar next to it has a crack in it too. So you should put a crown on it so that it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, that's fucking bullshit. If the tooth, the crown isn't lifting, you dumb bitch. What it is is that it's fucking 20 years old and it just sits awkwardly. Crowns are horrible to get, by the way. Yeah. You don't want a crown because they're really hard to floss around, which is why I use those flossers to get in there. Mm -hmm. They create gum disease. They're not ideal. So A, she lied. It's not lifting, you stupid cunt, because I've had my x-rays done several times over the years. Nobody has mentioned this. And I really trusted my guy in L.A., Mm -hmm. Number two, I'm not gonna. So if it cracks, it fucking cracks. Right. So then I'll deal with it. What are you talking about? So wait, what did you put end a up crown on it preemptively? How did you end up handling her? No. And then here's the third part. She says she goes. I go. I'm so afraid of my veneers popping off. You know, on the road or something. She goes. Well, why don't we get you a night guard? Because you it looks like you're clenching. And I was like, well, that's the first time I've ever heard that. No one's ever told me I clench in my sleep. I'm very relaxed. I don't sleep. Uh, so what clenched, are you gonna do about this? Bitch. No, but listen. So then I go, okay, yeah, let me uh, let me see what the estimate is on the the guard. That's the one thing I may do. I'll be like, well, you know, protective veneers. Guess how much she wanted for the guard? How much? You're gonna die. Fourteen hundred fucking dollars. Fourteen hundred dollars for a night guard. Get your life, bitch. Get your life. I said, go fuck yourself. I'm not doing any of this. You're out of your fucking mind. I go, really? I go, it's not lifting, okay? I have a dentist. I just took x-ray six months. It's not lifting. It's that the crown is 20 so years old. I'm assuming you're switching dentists. Of, to, uh, fucking yesterday, I already looked for somebody. Okay, I got somebody, okay? I mean, I couldn't, and it was a woman, a mother. I was very upset. I was like, how dare you try to rip me off, bitch? <sighs> But don't you agree? Why would I put a crown on a, a, a tooth that is cracked? She's telling me it's cracked. This is the first time I've ever heard mm -hmm. anybody say that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what? So let it break. And when it breaks, then you fix it. Yeah. Don't put a crown on it. Yeah. Stupid cunt. I'm so angry that she tried to rip me off. I can feel I'm the it. dental queen. I can sense I'm like it. Daddy Lelagon. I'm all fucking frothed up. Yeah. She called you daddy over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Don't swindle me, you bitch. Yeah. So we're out of there. Out of there, bro. Out of there, bro. I, I happened to ask for a recommendation this week, so I got one. Okay, good. And uh, it's not a mother. No. So. Nice lady. I was like, oh, she's a nice lady. I can trust her. Nope. Um, $1,400. Get your life, bitch. Get your fucking life. Stop calling us daddy. Yeah. Did your mouth guard cost you $1,400? No. No. But they're expensive. They are expensive. But maybe half of that, right? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe $600 max for that yeah. kind of a thing? 14 yeah. i could have i just died she's up in that price on stupid you stupid bitch listen um, i gotta take a pish may i sure okay, yeah. okay. Take it. um so this is super exciting <laughs> we mentioned a little while ago that we had done an interview with somebody we really wanted to interview talk to on our show and that person is dr joe court now to give people context who Dr. Joe Court is, here's how we first discovered him. Hi there, my name is Dr. Joe Court, and I'm going to give you reasons why straight men have sex with men. They're not gay, they're not bisexual. My whole um, specialty is with male sexual fluidity, and um, what I always say is that when women have a non-heterosexual thought, we give her wiggle room, but we fetishize her. When men have a non-heterosexual thought, we stigmatize him and we tell him he's not straight. False, wrong, I really want to get rid of this myth. I really want to get rid of this stigma. And if you stay with my TikTok, you're going to hear all the reasons why straight men have sex with men. I'll see you later. So this obviously piqued our interest because we had never heard this theory before. This theory. And actually, you know, that, that one actually really, you know, makes lo logistically, right? Logically a lot. It of... makes sense because a woman can have a gay moment, right, like he's right. saying, and it and doesn't define like, her yeah. as being, oh, you're a lesbian. Like, no, in college I Frenched a girl. End yeah. of story. Right. Whereas when a man does it, uh, it's very uh, stigmatizing. Yes. And yeah. so we found his TikTok. We started playing clips and then we actually got him to do a call with us. Mm -hmm. Now, on the call, I, ha I had an idea that I thought would be really funny, which was that I would tell him while we were interviewing him via Zoom, 
that I was on the road having a lot of gay sex. And what we didn't realize is that while it's kind of funny to us, um, it's his practice. Right. Like, it's his actual. Like he sees couples. He sees couples that are struggling with this that issue. issue, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'd blow like eight guys a week. And he was like, okay. Um, and, and he like, was and? like. Uh, you know, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. And we just played it serious. And you were playing the part of like, you're like, you know, I tell him like, it doesn't make me feel good when you do. And we, so we were kind of <laughs> pretending to be a couple with this issue. Yeah. And he was being very compassionate. Which, which, hold on, now that I think about it, yeah. is like the whole time you and I childishly were like giggling on the inside because yeah, we yeah. were like, this is so funny. Dude. Yeah, we were like, this is so funny. <laughs> yeah. But, but he, he was just, serious. But he because took it seriously. he took it seriously and, and actually was trying. Then we hung up and, and immediately I felt guilty. I Same. felt I had a, a bad feeling that we had done a bit and, and it just wasn't. Yeah. So we immediately called him back, confessed that it was a bit and talked to him more and had a great conversation with him. But shortly thereafter, he contacted us and said, I don't want any of that stuff to air. Which we we you know uh, respected respected his wishes and understand. I yeah. mean, look, we're two jerk off comedians. We yeah. thought we were tr- we we're trying to be funny. It flopped. Quite yeah, and honestly. we knew and we, we knew that it wasn't played well. But yeah, we fucked up. We didn't tell that story for a while, and then we did, and then he he heard it. We didn't even send it to him. It's amazing. He heard it and contacted us and said he appreciated that and that he would come back on the show. So I love it. We're super excited that in a few moments here, we will be joined for the second time <laughs> by third time, third time actually, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> by Dr. Joe Court, and hopefully you'll get to see this. If we don't fuck it up, yeah. This episode of Your Mom's House is also brought to you by Tushy. Tushy is the modern bidet company, washes away even the messiest of poops, leaving you with a better clean than toilet paper. It's not even comparable. And once you have a tushy, you're going to realize that you've been an animal. You've been living like a human that's an animal, mashing your poop all over your butt <laughs> with paper and thinking that you're clean. No, you need you need water spraying in there, getting that messy, sloppy, stinky turd off of your skin. You can't do it with paper alone. You got to have a tushy. You'll never want to poop outside of your house again. You'll never want, you'll have poops come into you and you'll be like, well, got to get home because I am going to use a tushy to wash all this shit out of my ass. Tushy is the modern bidet for people who poop. You just poop, you wash, and you pat dry. Start washing with a tushy bidet for a better clean. Go to hellotushy.com slash your mom to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash your mom for 10% off. After you buy and install your tushy, show it off, tag us, and Hello Tushy on Instagram. Fiverr. Fiverr is a great way to find freelancers to handle bits and pieces of your business that you may not have the experience to handle yourself. Fiverr's global network of on-demand freelance talent is here to help. Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support. From graphic design, copywriting, marketing, web programming, film editing, scoring music, and more. Find your talent and begin working on your project within minutes. You know, a lot, so many people will say, oh, I wish I had a logo. I wish I had this on my website. I wish I could, you know draw up a flyer well you can with fiverr you can find these people the freelancers um and they do the work for you pricing is always project-based not hourly no more guessing games you'll know exactly what you're paying for up front find a freelancer with the specific skills you need for your next project check out fiverr.com and receive 10 percent off your first order by using my code mom Find all the digital services you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R dot com, code mom. Again, that's Fiverr dot com, code mom. And we are back and we're so thankful and happy to be rejoined yeah. by Dr. Joe Court. Dr. Joe, thank you very yes. much. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. Thank we you. were floored we, and so surprised and so happy and thankful that you sent a message that you yes. heard us. Uh, discussing that we felt terribly for uh, the, your first appearance 
and um, that you were willing to come back on. So I, I'm curious, how did you uh, find out about that? You know, every time, well, the very first time even that you showed my videos, people count just from TikTok and social media, okay. they're all like, oh, my God, you're on mom's house. People I don't even know, you know, uh -huh. and they, they want you to come on their show, you know, so then it happened again when you did that last one about apolo apologizing and they said they want you on the show and that's how I heard. Oh, that's awesome, man. Mm. I'm, I'm so happy that you uh, you reached out and we've discussed it. We discussed it even earlier today that, you know, I think even the first time we had you on. Uh, we had called you back. We had like a second conversation, right? And and yes. we told you, and what, that's what we discussed at length, that sometimes you have an idea for a bit and then the execution of it just makes you feel bad. And that's what happened when we did that first bit with you, um, that we just yeah. we just felt bad that uh, it didn't it didn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I f if we if I had known, I would have been open to doing something like yeah, that with you. Yeah. It was that I didn't know. That's why I didn't. And then I was like, is this real? You know, because I mean, I'm a therapist, right? So I see lots of yeah. things that are uh, uh, outrageous, right? So I wasn't sure. Sure. We I didn't totally... know that. And by the way, <laughs> like Tom just said that, like in hindsight, we're like, oh, yeah, this doesn't seem absurd to you that a wife would <laughs> say, like, my husband's been blowing eight guys on the road. Yeah, yeah. To you, that's no. a Tuesday. But to us, we were like, ha, 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 that's so silly. Yeah, yeah. So right. now it makes perfect sense. And I'm so grateful that you're back. And we're just it's nice when you get to redeem yourself in the yeah. comedy world. Uh, well, one of the things too, that I actually wanted to, to bring up is, is some of the things we brought up in our second conversation, which is that, cause we, we found out who you were and it caught our attention by that first clip that we had played of you saying, you basically introducing your TikTok channel saying like, oh, this is my specialty. So if you would, I mean, can you elaborate a little bit on what you see and what you treat regularly? Because it's, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, um, I know it's very unusual to people. I, and I do. So what I see. So I, I do. I deal with a lot of male sexuality and a lot of sexual trauma. So in my office, a lot of the cases started out as straight men having sex with men because they had been sexually abused by male perpetrators. And from that, then you end up as an adult returning to the scene of the sexual crime. We as trauma therapists, we know that when you're abused as a child, if it goes unhealed, you're going to recreate it as an adult. So I'd see these men and they weren't gay. They weren't bi. They were reenacting trauma. See, mm -hmm. and everyone understands that. But what they don't understand is when it's recreational. I see men that enjoy having some kind of physical and sexual action with another man, but he's not attracted to the man. So I started to see this over and over and over again, and they weren't gay and they weren't bi. And mm. what then the couples really struggle, the, the women really struggle as well. Like, how could this be? They think their marriages are over. So, so you're saying that this is a trauma thing, usually when a man who is not normally into guys will be with other men. Have you, do you see it in the male behavior sexually? Do you see men who are not traumatized stepping out and yes. doing this okay yeah so uh, the majority is is the number one is the trauma then i see men that want to have prostate stimulation so they want to receive anal sex they would love to be what's called pegging mm -hmm. having their wife peg them put a strap on on and peg him and a lot of straight guys are into that but the women are see that as gay or he feels too ashamed to tell her mm. you know and i have, they come to me and i have to say to them listen buddy your anus doesn't have a sexual orientation it doesn't know whether it's gay straight or bi it's an anus you know mm -hmm. there's lots of gay men that do not like i'll tell you i do not have anal sex i have never had anal sex it doesn't appeal to me it's not erotic to me i call myself a side like I'm not a top i'm not a bottom i'm a side and um, it's not like my butt has something to tell me, you right. know, like I'm really straight someday. <laughs> yeah. But you just don't like it. I'm not into it. Right. It doesn't do anything for me. Right. So, so you're saying that those men want butt play, but the women they're with or maybe are afraid of it, like licking scrum, for instance. So it's just like some guys just have some dumb bitch that just won't fucking come to the table, basically. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't agree with that. Okay. But, okay, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, and but it is changing. A lot of the younger women are more than happy to do yes. it because they love it. It's the guys that are ashamed because of the criticism. You saw the yes. criticisms on um, on 
TikTok and even on your show, you know, like the other guys, nobody's being mean. No one was mean on your show. I really appreciated that. But it's so misinformed and so misunderstood. Like you asked, I think I watched one of them. I wasn't on it. You were talking about me and you asked your your guys be that um, behind the microphones, you know, have you ever heard of this? And they said, no, of course they haven't heard of this. Guys can't mm. talk about it. Right. Yeah, there is. There is. a. That's another thing that we, we actually brought up that I thought was a very valid point. You say in just one of your TikTok videos is that uh, female fluidity when it comes to sexuality is like accepted. No one bats an eye. It's just like, yeah, a girl might do this and that. But for male, it for men, it is stigmatized, and even an inkling of fluidity, um, people raise their eyebrows. Like, what's going? Like, they they immediately jump to judgment. And it's so unfair. And I'm, that's all I'm trying to do is challenge that and say men are just like women. Women might do it more relationally. Men do it more transactionally. They just get off. And and the other thing I just want to make sure you all know is this isn't always about anal sex. There's lots of ways to be sexual with another guy that doesn't involve anything with the anus. Uh huh. So why do you think? Why does society stigmatize male fluidity so much? What what is this? I think it's patriarchy. I think it's sexist. I think it's toxic masculinity. I think that people uh, have men in a box, and if and it's 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 misogyny if you think about it because it's seen as feminine. Mm -hmm. If a man is with a man, then it's feminine. It's so it, it just hits every one of those points, which is why I'm sure I went viral. Interesting. Wow. Well, this is it. Well, let's let's talk this through because in in Greece, uh, wasn't it common for men to be with men, right? Like, wasn't your first sexual partner a younger yeah. man, or men would yes. teach each other, and then that changes, right? With the with Christianity coming into play, and yes, even in it's the sort Middle of understood. East, yes, even the, keep, keep going. Yes. Right. So in the Middle East, isn't it common practice too that you know men can't have premarital sex so then they hook up with each other situational yeah, we, yes. homosexuality so i wonder why yeah. our society is so so afraid of dudes uh, butt fucking you know what i mean they or, really have men in a man box men yeah. are in a man box and it's not that they're not doing it i'm telling you they're doing of it and a lot of guys they they want to feel submissive there's research now we have really good research that a lot of straight men fantasize about um I don't know what I can say in the show. Can, can I be? Oh, uh, you can say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. free. Okay. So they can, they, it's they fantasize space. about sucking dick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Safe space <laughs> to talk about straight men sucking dick. Yeah. They're, they're, but they're not sucking the dick of a guy. Like I'll ask oh. them, what does the guy look like when you look up? Like when I look up, I want a hot guy looking down at me, not them. They're like, I'm, it's the idea of being submissive and, and engaging in what women get to do. That's interesting. And how, well, how prevalent do you feel like, or, you know, in your, because you've, had this practice uh, how prevalent do you feel like this is in society it's a good question i can only speak you know from my clinical experience and even my social life right where people are admit things to me because they know my my specialty yeah. i think it's more common though than we think because and it's just because men don't talk about it if they do like we said they lose their heterosexual identity nobody believes them so this is interesting what you said is that the male likes to feel submissive it's much like in game of thrones when the khaleesi figures out how to uh tame her husband the 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 war guy right what's his uh -huh. name i forget I his name she he, that's what khaleesi was told to do is what that the, do? the man feels like a dominant force out into the world but when he's with you he wants sometimes to be taken care of and to feel submissive he wants the woman to yes. sit on top of him and allow him to chill and not not always be in that role. You know, that might be the reason in um, in England, in the UK, that uh, kink is so popular, like spanking and S&M and all that. It's, that's with the power roles yeah. shifted, right? You see judges who like to be submissive in the bedroom and be whipped and spanked and whatever. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. And so that's, the, I'm glad you brought that up because that's another, that's probably the third reason guys will um, be sexually engaged with another guy, kink and fetish. Um, you know, some guys like their muscles worshipped. Women aren't going to be, oh my God, you got the biggest dick, the biggest muscles and be all about them all the time where gay men are. Gay men are more than happy to let a, a straight guy know all that. And um, he wants that and it's erotic for him. It's not about the guy giving it to him. It's about getting it, getting that adoration. Getting the adoration that these dumb broads just don't yeah. provide. You know, <laughs> stupid bitch, so tight. Yeah. God. Yeah. Well, this is really useful information for women, you know, because I it's true because pornography, especially too, portrays men one way 
in, 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 well, I don't know. That's not true right now. Well, no, there's, there's everything. So there's everything. But I know what you mean. Like most <laughs> growing up, I guess most most probably think that you have to fit into like this. Yeah. Style of, yeah. of being a, a, a sexual being. Like the man mounts the woman and yeah. jackhammers her. And, yeah. yeah, bitch. Yeah. And you know that's not the only way it goes. Right? Yeah. No. Right. It's like a one tone thing for the guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, women have their own stuff that we uh, could talk about as well. But for the guy, I think it's important we talk about. It. Men want sex in many, many different ways, and they're afraid to tell women because they have their own shame and they're they don't want to lose their women. Once they start talking like this, a lot of women say, where did you get these ideas? I don't even know you anymore. Oh, my God. It's true. If Tom were like, hey, I just I just want to suck a guy's wiener and it doesn't matter. I'd be like, what? I know, right. Yeah. Family's over. And, yeah. And I always thought that women would be more worried about um, STDs or STIs or HIV. That is a worry, but that's not their primary worry. The primary worry is he's going to lead me. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, because we're left carrying, uh, holding the bag. We've got the kids and the reproductive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that makes sense from a nature perspective then. Mm. Why homosexuality is so threatening to the family structure, so to speak, right? Like if you were to be like, I'm gay, I'd be like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because then he, he might want to leave and he has a gay or bisexual identity. But a, the, a lot of the guys that come to me do, but many of them don't. And they're really just straight men who just want to get off. And sometimes they want to be a little verbally abusive. They want to, you know, slapping, spitting consensually. Yeah. And they don't want to do it to their wives or their wives don't want them to do it to them. <laughs> so they'll find a guy to do it. <laughs> I imagine some of those conversations have to be pretty funny. Like, all I, <laughs> I'm just trying to spit in your face. <laughs> 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 they are hard. Do you so? Do you facilitate those discussions between couples? All the time. Shut up. All the Does time. Does it ever? Do you ever it's, get to <laughs> a point where it's somebody's, let's say, fantasy like that, whatever it might be, the slapping, spitting, pegging, and there's you, you know, it's difficult, and then they do it, and you find that they enjoy it, that they report, yes. that they, really. Yes. And I always say that. I say, I can't guarantee this. I mean, one time I had a woman, the very first time I, I convinced this woman, I said, just try pegging, put on a strap on. And, <laughs> and if you don't like it, abort, you know, just stop. It doesn't, it just don't, both of you can, she agreed and they came back and he, she said, I never felt so dominant, so wet, so aroused. I made him my bitch. And he was like this. He was so happy. Yeah. You know, he was like happy and they were both happy. But it, it doesn't always go that way, but yeah. it, it can. <laughs> Tom, could so. you see me doing that for you? No, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see you doing, or me really, but you especially <laughs> doing the strap-on thing. I could see you uh, slapping. Kicking in the nuts. Not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Slapping, I could see spitting. I could be a domin a dominatrix. I could abuse yes. somebody quite easily. Yeah, I but your your only that. thing that you only bring up is kicking in the I nuts. I like to kick. In I the am nuts. not interested, just okay. so that it's clear. I'm right. being kicked in the nuts. Oh, some men like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, really I like don't that. even understand how how it's tolerated. I mean, if I'm mm -hmm. if my nuts are grazed aggressively, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to puke. So I don't know how I'm going to take. I'm the same way. I know. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, how do they tolerate yeah, it? Yeah, how do they tolerate that? I don't know how they physically tolerate it. They have a high pain tolerance threshold for that, oh. and they like it. You and you can see there's porn out there yeah. that they're being kicked. You know the whole thing. They're they're uh, tied down and weights are hung. I I know, and they love yeah. it. I'm de I'm definitely. I promise you, that's not my fantasy. It's too bad. Well, so and I. Oh, it's too bad. I know because it sounds like you want to do it. I'm a real good kicker. I took Muay Thai uh, <laughs> boxing classes when I was in my late twenties. Okay. Go ahead, Doc. But but it's really funny that you bring this up, though, because this is a thing. So some straight men will uh, find other men to do engage in what's called cock and ball torture, CBT, uh -huh. right? So that's what that's called. And men know how to, there are men that are trained to know how to do it more than women. Sure. And then there's also uh, jack off groups. And a lot of the jack off <laughs> groups, a lot of straight men, because they not only like to jack off, they want to be watched jacking uh -huh. off. They want someone to say, wow, look at you. You got a big load. You got a big, <laughs> whatever. And then they leave. And it's not about, they're not attracted to the men in the room. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to say, yeah. that sounds pretty fun. <laughs> I think we have a jack off group going on in that booth right there. We can do it right now. Yeah. I would like to hear a little more praise for my big load, you know? <laughs> 
Right. A lot of guys would, you know, and here's what I always you say. Do. Women want to be told they're beautiful, that you're dressed nice. I love your hair. And guys want to be told that they're handsome, but they want to be told in the same way. Tell me my dick is huge. Yeah. Tell me you want it every minute of the day. Tell me you, you want my load. It's a love language of a male style. That's Tell true. me I want your load. Thanks. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. What a big load. So that's all I have to do, Doc, is be like, your load's so big. Your peener's so great. I don't know. Tom, would that turn you on? I mean, not the way she's doing it. <laughs> but you got to say it in a certain way. Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, I'll practice. Okay. Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> fuck the police. Fuck the police. <laughs> we're, we're your load about. is so big. Okay. And make sure it's, that he doesn't mistake it for your laundry load because you don't want him to give you a laundry <laughs> basket. True. You no. Want him to give you no. The other God, you're one. right about that. Have you? Yeah. Did you find that the... Um, like now, I mean, it depends on where you look that we're kind of coming out of at least the worst parts of the pandemic. Did that affect uh, your practice or what you saw? Like, was it yeah, more what changed or less? with people? I don't know. I saw people being more careful, but I didn't really see people stop finding other people to hook up with. I was kind of shocked by that because. <laughs> yeah, because I, I would mean, think that me, people like, would like put it on pause, you know? Yeah, no, the, the, what they would put on pause are exchanging fluids, right? But then engaging in other things could still be done, oh. right? So genital play, those things, but they weren't kissing as much. Some were, Hilarious. but some many were not. The spitting stopped, that kind of the stuff. The spitting stopped. stopped. Like COVID, right. you know. Okay. You can kick me in the right, balls, right. but just don't spit on me. <laughs> Fantastic. Exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Dr. Joe, can I? Oh, I'll tell yeah, you tell this. Us, tell us, tell us. Oh, God. What, one thing that has changed, and I love this. So gays and lesbian couples, gay and lesbian couples, they talk about sex. We have sexual health conversations because we've had to have our own. We've had to have our own just coming out. Straight couples are the worst. They do not talk about, um, you know, sexual health conversations, what they like, masturbation, if they watch porn, read erotica. And with COVID, you had to. Now people have elevated. I've seen straight couples talking about sex and negotiating and consent and all that, um, which we should be doing anyways. But they married couples weren't doing it and they're doing it now. Committed. couples. Wow. So that's a that's a big plus, a big improvement. Yes. That's exciting. exciting. Yes. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. White people are a little uh, uptight, right? Us straights are, are very uh, uptight, very squares, very squares. Very. Very, and and not talking about these things that should be talked about. That's why people end up having infidelity, and then then in the infidelity, the person's getting what they want when they could get it with their own. Spouse. Let me ask you this: You got a lot of uh, polyamory in your practice. Do you see that a lot? I do see that a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of open relationships. Does that uh, long term? Does that work out for people? It works out in the sense that they're having more sexual health conversations, like I said, talking about jealousy. Talk, and, you know, I always ask even monogamous couples, have you negotiated your monogamy? People look at me like I have two heads. What is it to negotiate? Well, can you masturbate? Can you send out dick pics? Can you receive them? Can you have a webcam with somebody in Romania? You know, these things are, are need to be negotiated just like in open relationships. Open relationships do it more, better. And um, there's more of a trust because they're discussing things. But and trust can still be get broken. And I'm saying, let's be real. Like, how? What percentage of those poly couples last? You know what I'm saying? I can't imagine yes. that really works out long term. Well, what ends up happening is the if there's a main couple, they last, but the what they end up attaching to may not may come and go. There may be a coming and going of what's going on around Oof. them. But there's a secure attachment between the couple, but they both have to want it. Yeah. Wow. They both have to want it, Tom. Yeah, that's my my poly experience as well. <laughs> um, Dr. Joe, Gosh. as we air, this will be a part of our new episode. Do we have your permission to tag on to the end of this, uh, the first interview where we were full of shit now that it, people will know that that's what it was? Absolutely. Oh, thank <laughs> I'm okay you. with that. Yes. And I, I am. How yes. embarrassing. I really appreciate <laughs> no, it, the whole thing it's a it, it's a really redemption for me too i really appreciate you doing this. no i I, oh I i was told you're very nice people and when i got off the first time i was like they don't seem like nice people to me at all. <laughs> no listen we gen oh, like dicks. we genuinely and then you can tell that it was genuine because you know we could have just we ended that first call and been like whatever we both in the moment immediately were like hey call him back 
we we felt the need to confess and to let you know because we felt terribly because we were aware that it it is your practice and that you were being genuine and you're a therapist and you help people yeah. and we felt bad that we had you know bamboozled you so uh it, it really was like just we felt guilty and we didn't want to leave with that feeling uh, that we had no, you know manipulated nice you so yeah thank, thank you, you very much of course and i appreciate that because it is very serious business to me it's very serious issues and but i can also laugh about it and take a joke so yes play it all you want you're the lovely. man lovely dr you. joe thank you for yes. your time thank you for joining us again and um best to you i hope we uh, i hope we get to talk to you again thank you thank you very much both of you thank you all right bye Bye-bye. bye that was awesome he's lovely and we get to air the interview yeah. i can't believe it um yeah that's uh First of all, he's amazing. He's great. He's and now fantastic. that we listen to him more, you're like, okay, that does actually make more sense that maybe men do have these inclinations, but they're not likely to say something to well, anybody. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that makes sense. as a practice, like what he's talking about, it's fascinating. I could listen to him talk yeah. about that for hours, you know, yeah. and just, just, it's like, you know, uh, watching couples. Yeah. Like it's like why we're watching those couple shows. So like, fast. I can watch that stuff for hours. I, n- I never get tired uh, of watching human beings interact and do you know like the whole time though like honestly the yeah. whole time yeah. i kept thinking god what are tom's gay inclinations like uh-huh. does tom have any oh really yeah of course the whole time like i wonder if he's like thinking about just like sucking dicks and stuff but then he doesn't say anything because you know because you know i'll be freaked out like i legit would be like oh dude now we got to break up the family you jerk it's been 17 years you kind of told me about this dick stuff before what would have happened before? No, I'm saying that if you had hidden your dick inclinations, your cock thoughts. Yeah. You could have told me this, you know, 17 years ago, but maybe you didn't know 17 years ago. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's like. It does ruin stuff. Not really. Why? Because now I get to be with all these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that would upset me a little, knowing that you're with dudes? What, the fact that I fucking want to go to a jujitsu place that's all nude and just get taught? Uh. <laughs> well, see, you know what I'm not hearing? What? A lot of reassurance right now. Oh. Babe, I don't have cock thoughts. Babe, get used to my lifestyle. <laughs> um, okay, so he gave permission. So we get to now show you the guys, <laughs> not just, I mean, because that was fucking incredible. Yeah. We get to show you. To be clear, the first time we had him on, where we fucking, we had a, we planned a bit. Yes. And the bit was, him. yeah, without <laughs> telling him. Because I thought it'd be funnier to do, like, now he I said know. I would have been on the bit. But then then it's acting. And I, we wanted to do a bit, you know. We wanted to get his real reaction. reaction. Which was, he was genuine. But this is us pretending that I'm on the road, fucking guys, <laughs> left and right. <laughs> <laughs> He's so nice about it. It's pretty good. Okay, enjoy. Mm. All right, we're super excited to be joined right now by somebody that we met, we discovered on TikTok. We've since uh, had a really like just fascinating time learning about this, and now we get to actually speak to him. It's Doctor Joe Court. You're here with us now, Doctor Joe. Woo! How you doing? How's it going? It's going well. Nice it's going to meet well. you. It's very <sighs> nice to meet you. You know we. So we, I think, came to discover you, may, probably the way many people have, where you had a video that you posted on TikTok where you made a very interesting point. You said something about, uh, you know, when a woman engages in homosexual behavior, it's uh, we give her a pass, we go, it's probably going through a phase, or, you know, she's exploring, or getting to know herself. it's fetishized. Yeah. yeah. And then if a man does something like that, then we stigmatize them and, you know, demonize them and go like, oh, my God, this is the end of the world. Um, and this is sort of your field of expertise. It is. I've been doing this. I wrote a book about it and I have been doing this for quite a long time. Yes. Now, now you mentioned briefly just a moment ago before we were rolling that a couple of the videos that, you know, a lot of people watched and, and kind of got your name out there on that platform have been silenced. Yes. So I did another video um, uh, two weeks ago, two and maybe a few days and two weeks ago, and it was on the same topic. And that went super viral. 
and people are duetting and they're stitching and it's all over the place. And from that, I'm getting even more attention, but negative attention where people are going through all my past videos uh, that I talk about straight men having sex with men. And I think they're reporting them because they what? were live and fine. Yeah, they're getting the one you showed up there on cuckolding. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Really? Wow. Now, can you explain? Because this is, I think, a real, you know, eye opener to a lot of people. Like, because when I watch your video and we got a copy of your book here, is my husband gay, straight, or bi, a guide for women concerned about their men? I can't wait to read this. I just found out about this. Here I'm, you go. I'm you so should. excited. Yeah. Um, so thank you. This is what I want to know, though. Like, you read, you read this, or you know, the the topic itself in the book, or you watch your TikToks, and how big of an issue is this? Because it feels like it's kind of an underground, unspoken of issue or topic. And it will stay. It w and it is underground, and it will stay that way as long as people keep reading the comments of what they're saying. In my, I mean, it brings out so many different things. First of all, it just challenges patriarchy. It challenges the straight man. Mm -hmm. You know, straight men doing this. They can't do it. You know, if you read the comments, people are like, it can't be done for pleasure. It's all got to be forced or trauma. You know, uh, and uh, I'd love to disagree. Hello. Yeah. Thank okay. You. All right, wait. Yeah. Disagree on which part? Uh, disagree that like, got, like straight guys don't just do it for pleasure, that it's fun. You know, like you go and you wrestle a guy and then, you know, your dick pops out. It just happens. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the thing is, go ahead. Dr. Dr. Core, I'm glad you're here because Tom and I have been having this debate for years we've been married for 15 years we have two children together and i mean i don't know tom does stuff every now and then that kind of makes me question like, i'm just but i'm very open you know like sexual yeah. yeah you know i've done threesomes foursomes uh orgies i've been with you know women guys trans people like i just you know i just put oh, it out there all yeah. right yeah okay so you're you're like done one of the one of the kind of men i'm talking about yeah yeah how do you all right i didn't know that how do you self-identify I, I identify as straight as a straight guy. Yeah, I do. This I do. is what I'm trying to tell people. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and people don't understand. They want, it has to mean for whatever reason that it cancels straight. That's what I keep saying. And it does not any more than a gay guy having sex with a woman cancels as being gay or even a, a woman. Thank you. That's see, that's very interesting. But I'm so confused because I, like what point does, is Tom gay? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, when what? is a guy, that is interesting. When is a guy gay? Like, if you blow yeah. four guys in Palm Beach after the show at the <laughs> Improv, are you gay then? No, it's not about sex. I oh. think people don't understand. We fought forever before me and after me, our, our community, saying don't define us by what we do sexually. If I'm never sexual another day in my life, I'm still gay. Gay is a romantic, spiritual, psychological, oh. and sexual, right? It's just one of the components. That's it's interesting. an identity. Yeah. Oh, so Tom would have to have uh, an emotional relationship with another man to be considered gay? Not necessarily, because uh, there are straight men that can have sex with a man and an emotional connection with the man, but only that man. That's called sexual fluidity. So Whoa. we all have the capacity. I know <clears throat> we all have the capacity to be fluid. Women, it was originally studied, have that capacity. They can be sexual with somebody, get it on with another woman, and she goes back to her heterosexual life. When men do it, we don't allow him to go back. And it's contextual. Mm -hmm. It's not like Tom's going to be on a beach all of a sudden looking at men the way I do. It's going to be a, an experience and contextual. Thank you. Stop worrying so much. God. Well, the other day I walked in on him and his trainer, and then they were in their underwear exercising. And it makes me uncomfortable because I'm like, well, I, you know what I mean? How do I handle these inclinations of his? by having those kind of discussions. And then that's why I wrote the book for women because it is uncomfortable because what other, you have been taught the way we've been taught, all, the way the men have been taught. To be straight means one way yeah. and no homo, all that stuff. Yeah. And so then you walk in on that. Of course you think that way and you gotta be able to talk with them. And this and is the thing, only trust. It was, uh, we started clothed and then we were going through, cause I, I had an injury. He's like, you wanna see the way, you know, your body's rehabbing. So we went through the exercises like, shirtless and then shortless and then you know pretty soon i was naked i don't know it just happened you know let me ask you something because i know people will comment on this why would you say you're not bisexual that's what people ask me all the time yeah mm. exactly i, I mean i don't know i think because i've only dated women and i like I, I like being married to a woman i'm i feel the most connection with women and i 
think about women, you know, so I just identify as straight, but you know, like sometimes like, like that day in the gym, that guy, the trainer, he blew me after we worked out, you know? I can't tell if you guys are joking or not. No, I'm serious. You are serious? Yeah. Nice guy though. Real nice guy. It was okay. like right during the stretching. Okay. I mean, I don't know you, so I can't, you know, yeah. um, I can't, you know, so in my office, I see people that have trauma, so they're reenacting trauma. Oh. I see people that have, um, you know, uh, other kinds of sexual interests around the exchange between the two men. Mm -hmm. But I, I would have to know you, but I, I wouldn't be able to. How, no one should be able to. But so this is something, though, because, like, you know, I mean, we talk about me, but I'm more interested in, like, you know, in your, obviously, I know that it's a, a confidential practice, but, like, how, like, are you constantly then sought out by men who are struggling with this issue? I have always been, because I'm a trauma therapist, I would always get the men and the women finding them more and more because of the internet, finding them looking at gay porn, looking at, you know, maybe even being on Craigslist when you could hook up on Craigslist. Yeah. So there would be that. And so then, then there would be a confusion. And so sometimes, of course, the men are gay. And sometimes, of course, the men are bisexual. Yeah. But often they're not. And yeah. so that's the distinguishing factor that I wrote about in that book. And so let's say a man is married to a woman and maybe he does enjoy watching gay porn. Should he come to his wife and say, hey, like, at what point should he say something to the wife? Like, can they can they stay married? Because you do have a TikTok yeah, you video. Yeah, about that. Yeah, so how does yes. that work exactly? So ideally, he should be able to come to his wife. Ideally, partners should be able to come to each other around erotic and sexual interests. The problem is our culture doesn't allow for that. And so when he, the reason men don't tell women is because once she hears that, she thinks he's no longer straight. And then there's no coming back from it. I've had couples crying in my office, uh, divorcing over this. Great husband, great father, great lover, great everything. But I can't get past the fact that he is engaging in thoughts even about men. Really? Oh, yeah, it's, it's very terrible. upsetting. It's, it is upsetting for me. I'm not going to lie. Mm. I understand upsetting. because. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, I, and do you understand that? That how it would make her upset because, from her point of view, not you. Oh, you, yeah, it yeah. sounds like, yeah, you, you're secure with yourself. It sounds like, and you know. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. I'm just yeah, afraid yeah. he's gonna fall in love with a man and run away. You, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be honest. Um, I, in, yeah, I don't know him, but I know the men in my office that identify as straight. It's transactional sex. It's about getting off. It's about. Yeah. There, there's even jack off clubs for men. What? That a lot of straight men. What? Go ahead. Wait, tell me about this. What's this? That there are jack-off clubs that, for men. That okay. men go to gay, a lot of gay and bi People think they're all gay and bisexual. They're mostly. But then there are straight men uh -huh. that are interested in jacking off with other guys. They're not touching other guys. They're, it's about voyeurism and exhibitionism. That sounds period. like a good solution. I know. Where can, you, where can we find these clubs? That I don't know. Uh, I think you'd have to look it's up. Online. I have, I, we have yeah, a staff here. And I do, we have a staff here. You yeah. guys can put that in your notes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh boy. So, you know what the worst part is? Yeah, yeah. I'll ahead. tell you the worst part is that the men that enjoy uh, getting, um, receiving anal sex think that mm. they're gay. And I have a line. I say to them, your anus doesn't have a sexual orientation. It doesn't know whether it's gay, straight, or bi. It's an anus. And it enjoys a prostate massage, which happens when you have anal sex. And so they want their wives to do it. It's called pegging. Yes. Yeah. But if the wife. I took her to right, a pegging class. We took a class on oh, it, Dr. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and right. I'm I'm open to it, but like if so, if I peg him, he's not gay. No. But if he gets pegged by a, a man, then he's gay, right? I no. mean, or bisexual. No, 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 because there are gay men that never have anal sex. Oh, Does right. that mean they're not really gay? You know yeah. that they're not so into. Confusing. Yeah. It's confusing because you're still thinking behaviorally. Yeah. Now I can't. There are a lot of women that like pegging their husbands. There's a lot of husbands that like to be pegged, and some men want to have a live penis that's attached to the person but they're not thinking god the guy behind me is super hot they're not thinking that they're thinking i am enjoying this guy i can be submissive right. i can enjoy my right like so, a woman so as long as he's not like oh it's the guy that's doing this to me like i'm turned on by the man part of it as long as it's just like the penis going into his anus like right then then you go like it's not a dude doing it you don't well, think about that part. So there is some of that. And then there is, I do like, see, this is going to be complicated. I know. Sometimes it is about the guy behind me, but it's not like me. 
I'm looking at all the guys on the beach that, that are attractive to me. That guy who's getting um, anally uh, penetrated by the guy behind him who might be into him a little bit. It's just that guy. There's something about this guy between us. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. I got it. Now, I want to go back to something. I know we discussed it, but I think a lot of people are going to be really curious on the clarity of when is somebody like gay because of like, you know what I mean? Because of their acts or thoughts. And when is it a straight guy engaging in an act with a man, but he's not gay? Like what, what is that distinction? Okay. So I always jokingly say I'm not a gay whisperer. Mm -hmm. If I was, I would be rich and having dinner with Cher tonight, not over here. on your <laughs> body. I, mean, I, love your podcast, but I would be with Cher. I, I understand. I understand. Okay. Yeah. So I can't tell. I really can't tell. What I can tell is how to help a man go inside. And in the book, I talk about four questions. The first question is, does he have any childhood memories or youthful noticing of being on crushing on boys, being attracted to boys? I have tons of memories of being in locker rooms and crushing on this guy named Billy and wanting him to be my first kiss. And I have so many, gay and bisexual men have so many. Straight men who have sex with men mm -hmm. have none. none. It's all women. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all women. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, mm -hmm. okay. So okay. that's now, one. So, our, so number three. Question? Number two is homophobia. The guys that are um, gay and bisexual are so gay, hom homophobic and biphobic. I'm too gay for them. They're never going to walk in my office. They want a therapist to talk them out of it. The straight guys have read my books and uh, better than any gay guy, by the way. They've read all my first books for gay men and they say, if I'm gay, help me be gay. And I'm like, you're not gay. It's, I mean, it doesn't sound like you're gay from what you're telling me. You. So they, and they also don't have any homophobia. They're, they're okay with that. Do you have, yep. you, you don't seem homophobic. I'm not no. homophobic, no. But that's a good point because I think you said even in your TikToks that sometimes people are afraid to be gay because of their own internalized homophobia. And even the um, fraternity culture, you you spoke about that, how doesn't, like they, they do a lot of horseplay, gay stuff, and they're, oh, they're yeah. mocking it. There's a guy that works here. I think you met him, Nadav, and he said that when he was being initiated into his fraternity, he, they, they did like this tea bag challenge where you lay back and everybody dips their balls in your mouth, you know? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. right, right. And so everyone, under, nobody ever puts in that article, um, these guys are really gay. Yeah. If they right. Were, right? But yeah. when men do it and they're men of color and they're on the down low, then people say they're all gay. Right. That's not okay. Mm. That's not okay. You can't have it both ways. Okay. Um, uh, next question. What was yeah, the next question? Yeah, the next question. question? The third one was the beach test. When you're on the beach, right. where do you see your attraction? Like for me, the women are in the way. I'm looking at the men. <laughs> I'm not looking at the women, right? Yeah. So for straight men in my office, they'll say I'm not looking at men. They're not. I'm not turned on by men. I'm turned on by women. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm, so I'm so so far we're still yeah. straight. And then the fourth one. What's the fourth question? The fourth one is who do you want to come home to? In other words, where is your community? Where where do you feel at home? I feel at home with the gay male community or the LGBT community. Um, the straight men will say, I feel I want to wake up to a, what? a woman. I'm yeah. interested in women and being with a woman. Yeah. You're still there? Pretty much. All right. We're going to stay married. All right. Now, can a gay man, a fully gay man, stay married to a woman? How does that work? Yeah, so so how, how it works is um, they have they end up opening up their relationship um, and um, he ends up being able to be sexual and they negotiate that together. Yeah. They negotiate. So she has partners on the side or, or whatever. He, he she does may or thing. may not. But a lot of therapists um, judge these couples and force the straight one to come out. Not force, but, co you know, sort of like this is what you need to do to the gay spouse or bi spouse. You need to come out and go on with your lives. And I've never been that way. I feel like marriage is between two people. And what you decide it's going to be for you, not what Joe Schmo outside of here decides it is. That's yeah. a really good point. It's yeah. so that everybody, individually, every couple decides the definition for them. Yes, and in gay male relationships and lesbians, it's, it's exactly like that. Because we're out of the norm, right? We're yeah. not into heteronormativity. We decide what we want on our own. Yeah. I know a gay couple that um, they, they, they crush ass on the side. Like, and they have, a, you know, they have an open dialogue about it. Like, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna. I hooked up with this guy today at the park or whatever. And yeah, yeah, they just yeah, and they but they're both cool with it. Yeah, that's the key though. They have to both be cool with it. You know, they have they to have, have a to discussions. Have a, yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind if discussion. Mother Teresa came on board too, if you know what I mean. Over here. No. Oh. oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, you want to go on a gay cruise, and I don't want to go. I don't want to look at gay guys throwing beads at it's each not other. Just, but it's not. It's not a gay cruise. It's a. It's a sex cruise. 
Right. So it has everything. It has like little people. <laughs> but I it feel has, like I do like, enough for you because I we watch gay porn while we're having sex. Isn't so, that enough? Yeah, sometimes. I like to mix it up, man. I like fireworks, I like that you, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. I like that you guys are having an open conversation about it. That's Thank the you. most important thing. That's all that matters. He doesn't give and me any other also, choice. Can I tell you something else I'm into? He's always telling me stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, amputees. Okay. Yeah. I know that that's a fetish. I don't know what it's called, but I know that that exists. Yeah. Yes. And, I, and I, I'm and i most attracted to actually female amputees. You Now you're just telling mm-hmm. me this one? Yeah. Something I've been uh, getting off to quite a oh, bit. Oh, boy. Okay. Like uh, I like the fantasy of like helping them when they're like, oh my god, you know, can you get the door for me? And you're like, yeah, but it comes with a price, you know, that kind of thing. But let me ask you something. Do you also acknowledge how hard this is for her? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I just bought her. I mean, that has to have. Go ahead. I bought her jewelry last week. Like, hey, you know, I know no, no, I mean, really being empathic. You, oh. you have your fantasies. This is what I would do in a room: is help you understand. So how do what I do that? Up for her. Yeah, tell me. By, by asking her to talk about it and you just listening and, and validate, you know, like you would oh. say, I, I, hearing it from her point of view, not taking away your point of view, but I can see, I don't know if this, you know, I'm on your show, so I don't know yeah. what yeah. what's going on, but you, you look like it's not completely comfortable for you. Well, you. it's again, it's, you know, I'm getting used to this. He's always told me jokey jokes about it. Like, oh, back in college, my friend and I would horseplay or this and that. And I was like, okay. And then now it seems like lately it's just getting more and more concrete. These things like walking in on, on him and the trainer and we've been watching a lot of gay porn in our own sex life and stuff. And, you know, we did do that pegging seminar, which was like, ha ha at the time. But now I'm like, oh, this is like, this is real. So it's it's newer, I think. Yeah. And, so and it's then, evolving. It's, yeah. And then yeah. he asked me to get these bangs and I was like, okay, like, because I think a old friend of his looked like Justin Bieber in college or whatever and he wanted me to do this and then he wanted me to get this nose ring and this is like because his other friend from college had it and then he's like I want you to strap your breasts down a little bit they're too big like stuff like that so I'm like I'm getting a little nervous hmm. yeah I, I, I see what you're meaning though I should just listen to her you know right and validate how this might be difficult for her to come around to yeah yeah I'm listening right now thanks all right yeah well, let's listen yeah should I charge you for this? I mean, I think so. At this <laughs> point, it's fully a session. Um, so, all right. So people is it, uh, can get the book, Is My Husband Gay, Straight, or Bi? A Guide for Women Concerned About Their Men. They can also yes. follow you on TikTok, Dr. Joe Court. Do you post on other platforms too? I do. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on... Um, and it's all Dr. Joe uh, Court? It's all at Dr. Joe Court. Okay. And um, hey, man, like when we're uh, we both tour, you know, when we're in Michigan, are you going to come to a show? I would love to. I I, I, I would love to. Yes, oh, I've been watching some of your stuff on line. You're oh, just cool. fantastic. And yeah. thank you so much for you're doing very this nice. Work. And I feel like, you know, you really open people's eyes. I could tell you're a really kind, empathetic you're guy. Sweet guy. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's thank nice. you very much. It's nice to talk to you. Um, I'm going to you know, listen to the uh, old ball and chain yap here for a while after this one. But. <laughs> Thanks so Ridiculous. much for talking with us Thank today. you so much, Dr. Corey. All right, thanks for having me. All right, Aww. we'll talk to you later. Bye, yeah. see ya. Bye-bye. <sighs> so there it is. Was that mortifying for you? Well, it's just... Uh, it's hard for me. It's it, what, I, what it is is it, I really just feel like I feel bad yeah. for doing a bit like that and it not considering that that's his work you know. and that he was actually trying to be helpful. That, and so I can see why we felt guilty, you know. Of course, and look in comedy, you take swings at things. You take swings, you got and to. that's the that's and you just saw as bomb is what you saw essentially is yeah. a bomb because it didn't go as we wanted. It happens all the time, and it happened. And, and by the way, yeah, in comedy, You're in life, to. you swing for the fences, you fucking miss, and we yeah. missed, and that was a yeah. miss, and you yeah. guys got to see it. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to see it. Um, God. But but we redeemed ourselves and we made friends with them, and it's all good. Yeah, and I do think he is a genuinely. Good guy who cares about this this field. And he has great teeth and great hair. Good for him. Good for him for having both great teeth and great hair. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Whoop, the personalized digital fitness and health coach. You monitor your recovery, sleep, training, and health with personalized recommendations and coaching feedback with Whoop. Train smarter, recover faster, sleep better, and now feel healthier with Whoop and their all-new Whoop 
4.0, the latest, most advanced fitness wearable on the market. I have my Whoop. I don't have the new 4.0, and I desperately want it. The all-new 4.0 is smaller, smarter, and designed with new biometric tracking, including skin temperature, blood oxygen, and more. I love the insight this thing gives me, the way that you can just open your phone, see how you slept, see how you've recovered, see what kind of strain you put on yourself, what your body might be ready to do, see, hey, maybe it's time to go to bed and your sleep coach tells you one of my favorite things about it. The all new waterproof device is free when you sign up for a Whoop 4.0 membership for any members. If you have six months left of membership on your account, you can upgrade now and get the 4.0 for free. And right now, Whoop is offering 15% off when you use the code MOM at checkout. Go to Whoop, W-H-O-O-P.com and enter M-O-M at checkout to save 15%. Ooh, I am breaking the cycle of generational trauma. That sounds like a lot. It is. I go to therapy and I have been for a decade. I advocate it to everybody. It has changed my life completely. There's there's no reason to be anxious or depressed. And talk space makes it even easier to get mental health help. Now, you know, you, you can talk to your friends, but they're not qualified to help you the way a therapist is. Um, talk space is convenient and it's stigma free, meaning you're you're not going to feel embarrassed. You're not going to feel like, oh, my gosh, who's going to know? Who's going to know? A talk space, your privacy and security are their number one priority. The app puts you in a private room with just you and your therapist. Send messages 24 seven and get replies throughout the day. No need to wait for a weekly appointment. Join talk space today and start moving forward with a single message. Just visit TalkSpace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code YMH at sign up. That's $100 off at TalkSpace.com, promo code YMH. Um, you got to get out here soon because you got to go to your book club. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Let me tell you something about book That lady club. might be the one who was like, fuck the police. I- <laughs> she might be there. <laughs> Can I tell you, this is my first time I'm belonging to a community book club because uh-huh. here in the South, they want you to join. You understand? Like, there's no such thing as you're not joining the neighborhood right. book club. So I, I'm giving it a try. I'm going to be one of these people that has a book that club. I shows read, up. That shows up and I make friends in the community. I'm really trying. And the book was really awesome. Um, what was it called again? Yo, Dre, I'm something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. The Silent Patient. We read The Silent Patient. It was very good if you guys are interested. Uh, uh. So we'll see how it goes. And I have to leave on time to get to my book club. So yeah, I can't believe I'm a person that does book club. It's hard to believe. It no, really but I'm Southern now. I, I want to try to be normal-ish as I talk about my goth mom den. Fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the police. Yeah. Fuck the police. Do you know what you would pick if you were going to bring a book for them to read? I think we know a book I'm bringing. But what's his name? Little Bougie took it. <laughs> what if? I thought uh, I thought you were going to bring a uh, post office. I like love Bukowski. Bukowski. <laughs> with the- <laughs> Yeah. See, I didn't realize that. See, this is another Pajitsky effect. I didn't know that in a book club, you have to recommend that you pick the book. Yeah, yeah. I'm mortified because all everything I read is degenerate stuff. If you look at my shelves, yeah, it's completely. It is. It's Bukowski. Yeah. It's philosophy. Maybe the Bible. Should I be like, we're gonna read the Bible cover yeah. to cover, bitch? Right. What if it's like, uh, oh God, Dostoevsky or something dark? And they'll They'd be, like, be like, this um, is so. You fucking... know, we're gonna not do the book club anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you recommend? Maybe. Oh, what about the Four Agreements? That's an easy read, and that's a nice. Yeah, but they. Pro- I mean, they really want. Like, let me know fiction. how this one goes. Let me know how the how the meetup goes. Yeah, I'll think about it because okay. everything I like is dark as shit, like nausea by yeah. Sartre. I okay. like. <laughs> Don't bring. I that mean, up. I like no. darky. I know. Zizek. We'll see. That's the last thing I was reading. Maybe get a maybe ask what some of the past books have been, so you can see like what the world is like of books they read. You know what I mean? Nah, I should make him read a dark book. Okay. Battle Royale. That's 500 pages. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I heard you bitches yeah. was looking for me. <laughs> Man, I'm so stoked for this segment. What you need? Look at Emerson. Emerson! Oh, my God! 
<laughs> you like that? That was great. That was a light. That talk. was great. That was well, because on the last episode, you were chastising me for my dark feed. It was so depressing. I know. I left here just sad. Yeah. 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 Um, it makes me happy. That was great because that looked so real. It scared yeah. that woman. She goes, oh, Emerson. Look at Emerson. Oh, Emerson. Oh, my God. So cute. Oh. <laughs> That's a great prank. <laughs> That's so a great talk. For people just listening, they have a baby tied to a bunch of balloons. And, and so he it, hid behind a wall and yeah. it looked like the balloons were yeah. flying her up. Yeah. And yeah. so grandma was freaking out. Freaking out. Super cute. Oh. Oh God. I'm sitting out on my porch, right? And I'm getting blown. It's very windy. It feels good. <laughs> getting blown. <laughs> this guy, I've seen him a few times. And I realized that he is acting. He's doing a bit. So you know? He's doing shtick. Yeah, he's doing shtick. You're a professional comedian. Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah, I like him. But, you know, <laughs> what happens is a lot of times you you play really real people, you know? like. What are you talking about, Tom? That are not doing a bit. So TikTok is... I'm it stands out where I'm like, oh, this guy's that. doing this guy's doing a bit, which is like, it's amusing. Well, you know? and he is TikToked, which is kind of rare But he's that not. He appears TikTok. Oh, he's not talked at all. You don't think he's slightly talked? No, I think he looks. He looks talked. He knows he looks talked. <laughs> That's the bit. You're saying there's a self-reflective element. This guy's here completely self-aware. That he knows really exactly what he looks enhances like. Enhances his work. Yeah, yeah. And he, I mean, look how he shoots it. He lays down. He always <laughs> has food in his fucking mustache. He knows what he's doing. This guy knows what he's doing. He does. AJ knows. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Junior. Anthony. <laughs> Mira, tiburón, aquí estoy comiéndome unos chitos. <ríe> y aprovechando el día de playita. ¿Quiere que te envíe la ubicación? Rakiti. So I know he's saying, like, I'm eating my Cheetos, I'm at the beach. But what's yeah. the, like, what else is he saying? Here, I'll take you through it. Yeah. Mira, tiburón, aquí estoy comiéndome unos chitos. Let this look, shark. I'm here eating some Cheetos. <laughs> y aprovechando el día de playita. Enjoying the day at the beach. Uh, el Chandro. El Chandra. Aprovechando el Apro. día en la playita. Sí, I know. Quiere que te envíe la ubicación. Rakiti. Well, it gets cut off, but you want to come here on, invited on vacation? He's talking to Shark? Yeah. Shark is the Well, name. it's probably followers, you know? Oh. That's what he calls, maybe he calls his followers tiburones. Does he have breasts or he's just wearing a bikini? Don't know. Don't know if those are implants or but part of the bikini. See, here's what really upsets me sometimes. What? Is these guys that dress like chicks, they got like smoking hot twink bodies. Yeah. It's not fucking fair. Because when you're a biological woman, you're all fucking fat. You know what I mean? Like our bodies carry more fat. It's mm -hmm. just not fair. They look so much better mm. than me in a bikini is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I mean, he looks great. He's got a banging lady body. Nice bod. Yeah. It fucking bums me out. But his face is not good. <laughs> Shit. Oh, uh -huh. fuck me. Nice and fat. So she's got a plate of rats. A lot of them. <laughs> I mean, my main thing is like, I'm not even thinking about that she's going to eat a rat. I'm thinking like, why are you going to eat 20? Well, they're, they're little bites. These are these I are like boneless know. chicken wings, man. This is fucking... There's barely a bite in these little morsels. They look pretty big to me. Well, they're just full of gas or something. That doesn't gross you out? Uh, eating rats? I mean, I imagine the meat's kind of greasy, like squirrels. <sighs> Oof. 
I don't think it's good meat. Oh, uh, it's rough. They're just, their diets are bad. That is rough. They eat garbage and stuff. Well, Have she- you ever been stuck in a conversation much longer than you wanted to be? In a recent study, 66% of participants <laughs> wanted a conversation to end before it did. Here's how you do it. Start by asking a question about the near-term future. Hey, do you have any good plans for the weekend? This gets the person out of this moment and focused on what's coming next. Once they relay that future plan, you can respond to it and move into a close. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. I hope you have a great weekend. It was so nice talking to you. Yeah, you know who does that? Helpful. Uh, customer service people. You ever, you ever understand, you know what I mean? Mm. You go, um, I don't know, you're, you're checking into a hotel or something. Oh, right, you have and any plans? And they'll be like, plans? you have any plans? And you're like, what? Yeah, move it along. Yeah, they're just like getting ready to, to wrap you up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I just thought this was helpful because you and I, 90% of the time are in conversations we don't want to be in with that's people. True. And this was really that is true. a neat thing to know. <laughs> that's really cool that's at big d with a little k so this is the guy originally who i discovered that just farts on tiktok yeah and he shows us now he's doing you know he's, he's shirtless and that fart was nothing to write home about nothing no i wouldn't I, have posted that. i would have deleted that yeah discarded that yeah. upload yeah it wasn't special enough i'd say better luck next time yeah I am the vampire king. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> that was just for you to get that look. What? It's Halloween. He's a vampire king. No, I get it. I got it. You're not scared? Hey, this is my application. I'm looking for a sugar mama. If you got dental and gym money, hit me up. <laughs> dental and gym money. Yeah. He wants to go to the gym. Well, he wants to better himself, which I appreciate. A lot of times these sugar babies, they just want purses and high-end merchandise. He actually wants to improve himself. He wants to get better teeth and a body. I'm, su- I'm for that. Isn't that what we all want? Would you be his sugar mama? Nope. I don't like his type. I'm not interested. I don't What's like his, his type? goofy facial hair. What's your type? Well, he's a teenager, first of all. He looks filthy. What is your type? Well, this this isn't it. I, I, I don't have a Still type. Still not answering the question. Again, I don't have a type. I, I like people on the individual. I don't, I don't have a type. Okay. I like your type. You know what I like? Scummy. <laughs> Homeless. I've told you that. You know who I like? Mm-hmm. Dirty. I like fucking, uh, what's that guy, 99 Problems, Vincent Gallo. God. I like- uh, What do you like about that? Benicio Del Toro. Yeah, but Vincent Gallo looks like you. Blue eyes, the beard, kind of scraggly, dirty looking. I like that. Really? I like I like guys to look like guys. I don't like perfect. Yeah. I like a little gritty, a little mean. Yeah, look how crazy that guy is. I like Vincent Gallo. I like That's that your look. fucking type? Well, yeah. Look at him, he's a f- weird, that's you. You don't see you in there? No. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I like uh, Benicio Del Toro, and then Ryan Gosling. I like you Ryan always bring Gosling. up Gosling. I think that's the real answer. Well, he's Gosling. pretty, but I wouldn't, in real life, I wouldn't be into him. Why? He's too perfect. I don't like perfection. I like this. I like <laughs> scars. I like beards uh-huh. do you know what i'm saying sure yeah. i find i'll tell you the truth i i find it feminine when a man is too like pr- he's not pretty but yeah. when a man is too beautiful it's feminine it, it reads i like masculine gotcha. male gotcha. dudes okay. right. dudes this guy is a little feminine with his bleached hair <laughs> what do you think isn't this wild? Look at his tits, babe. So for for people just listening, it's this bodybuilder, and his his titties are bigger than mine, and he's injecting. I'm taking my glove off. Are they, <laughs> no. 
Is he? Is this plastic surgery yes. or injectables? No, this guy's. This is serious body dysmorphia. <laughs> I mean, look at his traps. Those I, aren't real traps. And like, uh, the, oh man. And I don't think he's got real abs either. Uh, this guy's really sick. Yeah, it's pretty funny, he, right? <laughs> look at his house. He's got graffiti in the house. I mean, that's not a good. This, this guy's really out there. <laughs> Super sick. <laughs> yeah. I like, this is my favorite. This is the best. <laughs> There's nothing better than this. There's no better TikTok. This is the ultimate TikTok. But hold on. Don't go yet. There's two great TikToks. No, three. Number one, do you ever worry that you're retarded and no one's telling you? Yeah. Well, well it's true. It's true. Yeah. That's the number one ultimate TikTok. Number two, Captain Marcel. Captain yeah. Marcel My down the mountain. Went down the mountain. Yeah. Number three, the Romanians playing goat bagpipes. I mean, there's nothing better. This is real. This it's isn't a rad. gag. Yeah, it's not a gag. This is a cultural. This reminds me growing up. These like I had this shit in my six house. Six dead goats that are yes. now. Yeah. Yes. This is if you. This is the shit that I like. The stupid doily everywhere yep. and this. This is my house growing up. I got I you. Love it. Oh. You're not even excited about a man playing a goat bagpipe. What have you seen? Everything. Look at this, dude. This guy's rad. This could be my uncle. So fucked up. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah, they're Romanians. They're next door. Hey, everybody. Have you considered uh, investing yet? If not, you need to get in touch with Caitlin Bryant. Bitcoin is really the way to go now. I found out the hard way. <laughs> Take my word for it. It's the only way. Does, you... does it cut off there? That's what yes. it cuts off? I think for an investment pitch, you want to hear the whole thing. No, yeah. that's all she needs. Have you, have you heard of Bitcoin? You take my word for it. They, oh, okay. She's a millionaire. You can't tell. Yeah. She's got a nice pad. Fuck me. You want me. to take investment? No, I don't. <laughs> I do like, I do like though, that it's something about like, do you want, you know, here's what you should do with your money and then it goes Found to. Found out the hard way. Take my word for it. It's the only way. It's not. Cuts off. And much like the guy, the nookie guy, I want nookie on my face. Yeah. Like she's watching TV, the yeah. reflections in the glass. I just landed in New York City and I'm so excited to get, whoa. Hey, I'm walking uh, here. Yeah. I'm really excited to get, listen to me. We don't talk like that. We don't say things like that. You understand? Do you understand? Okay, sorry. Forget about it. <laughs> That's great. I've seen this. I've seen it. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. funny. It's a good bit. It's, it's a, a good, good one. one. We don't talk like that. Yeah. Like actually, you do. You just did. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a bit though. Talk like oh, that's set up. That's that set was up. a setup. It's yeah. pretty funny. It's funny though. It's Forget funny. about it. Yeah, I like. He's a good kid. It's like when I saw the Tom Cruise impersonator, and I was like, that guy's really good. <laughs> you didn't see a Tom Cruise impersonator. You saw a deep fake of Tom Cruise <laughs> that was perfection you're like it kind of looks like tom cruise <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't believe my good fortune that i found a man who looks just like tom cruise yeah, but yeah. isn't tom cruise it's pretty cool yeah Oof. well you, you know who you are um uh, i love you christine okay what can i say popular different that guy you guys love me loves you loves me you know who you are you know who you are christine i go for him over the sugar baby guy yeah mm -hmm. he's like a real man Looks like a dude this is a real dude yeah mm -hmm. i like dudes so you're saying this guy's got a shot maybe <laughs> pretty cool Hey, you are, like I said, I do not want to join you guys contact me, Luminati, so if you do, or anything I will reject you group. every time. Do not I don't not want to join you guys. This one's masterful. <laughs> masterful. Come on. Also a real dude. He's a real, uh, too real. It's a little too much. He's duetting himself, mm -hmm. telling people not to bother him. Like, yeah. it's pretty great. That's kind of meta. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Talking to himself is pretty great. It reminds <laughs> me of that prank phone call. 
<laughs> of that guy. He's like, whose bitch ass is this? He's like, who the fuck are you? And it's him it's recording. Great. <laughs> This is brilliant. But he did this to himself. Yeah. He not did. another TikToker. No. He's duetting himself, which I've never seen before. No, it's pretty amazing. I've never seen that. Yeah. That was new. That yeah. was cool. Yeah. yeah. Good time. That's it. That's no it. more? That's it. That's the last uh, one. That was a good that was a good batch. Happy. I feel I feel a little more uplifted than the last time. You don't time. feel sick inside? Not like last time. That was really bad. We should have closed on the baby. Yeah. 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 Well, next time. I know. I okay. Next time we'll close on a yeah. I need a little bit of positivity. Yeah, I got you. Your talks. Okay. This fills me with joy. I don't know about you. This is pretty great. What about a guy in a lathe getting his shirt and his body stuck in a lathe? Would that bring you joy? You look at your face. It almost was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your face? Unfortunately, the shirt ripped, but it was pretty cool. You're cute. Thanks. I think you're pretty cute. See, you're handsome. I like your type. I'm my type. Yeah. Who's your lady type? Who's your celebrity crush? I don't know if I have a celebrity crush. Who would you? You've what? said this for years. Because because I don't think of in terms of celebrities. I don't have like, I don't have, I mean. And who's your type? What's your type? Mm. Yeah, dudes. Dudes, yeah. Sucking dicks. Yeah. Charlize Theron. She's great. What's your type? Just like, you know, chick puts out fucking oh little attitude okay. willing to spit a little bit. I don't know if they <laughs> fags or what. I don't know if they fags or what. Is that right. good? That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Black police showing out for the white cop. <laughs> Black police showing out for the white cop. Why don't you read her transcript at your book club? Oh my gosh. They'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, this is happening in our schools. <laughs> you know? They, they'd be like, all right. This is what you're teaching our kids. Near the children. What should I recommend for my book club? Um, okay. <sighs> We got to run. Okay. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. This I like seeing you. This was a great you. episode. Yeah. I love you. Love you too. It was fun uh, to do this. We got to we got to reconnect with Dr. Joe Court. Yeah, that was nice. Had some great videos. Daddy Long, that stop calling me daddy <laughs> is back. Um, yeah. Mm. Our closing song is by uh, Wick Wicked. It's called uh, Bert Kersher Wrong Name. <laughs> nice. Ready? All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You searched for music as you were finding your favorite song to listen to. Call me the wrong name. I mean, I've heard of people just massacre. People fuck up my name. Brett, Brett, whatever. You're fucking up. Bert Kershaw. Bert Bert, uh, Kershaw. It just never, it never stops. Bert Kershaw. Bert Kreisinger. Bert Chrysler. Bert Chrysler. Him and Brett uh, Kershaw or Kershaw, whatever.
and he was like, oh, Brad Kreischer. And I, I just could not stop. I was like, it, it, it's like, it just doesn't It's stop. real. <laughs> this is amazing. I hope it never this ends. This is amazing. Hi, thank you for watching that episode of Your Mom's House. Please continue to watch more. You can see all these were my hands gesturing. You can click on those. And please subscribe if you have not yet. And subscribe button, and then we'll get your money. Thanks.